and your boy Friday the South Man. Charges on the beat. Indeed, tune to Spoon to get your information, to be part of our discussion, to know exactly what's happening in Liberia, what's happening in the ministries. Of course, uh, getting authentic information about the happenings across Liberia. This is where uh, you tune every single day uh, to know the happenings, to hear critical analysis. And of course, when the newsmakers get to break the news, uh, this is where they do so. I'd like to say welcome to another edition of the program. Uh, the Spoon Talk is back on your radio and on your favorite uh, channels. We also are uh, here tonight to ensure that uh, we bring you all the best, all the major happenings. This edition of Spoon Talk is loaded with lots of great information that you certainly are going to use, authentic news. So uh, thanks for joining us tonight. All of you across Liberia joining us on the different radio frequencies. Um, 
at Craft Spoon Network. We're live on Spoon 107.5 FM. We're live on Fabric 101.1. And we're live on Super 95.5 FM as well. Thanks to all of our partner radio stations across Liberia that are relaying this program. Thanks to Punch FM 106.7. Thanks to Gibi FM 90.9 in Kakata, my Gibi County. Thanks to Trend Radio 104.7 in Grand Cru County. Thanks to the folks there um, in Bowman County as well. Trust FM in 8.7. And uh, we want to say thanks to Premier Radio as well for relaying this program, making sure that Liberians across the country and across the world are informed as we go about with this edition of the program. I also want to say thanks to all of you joining us online. We're live across the internet. We're on uh, YouTube and the handle is Spoon Talk Live. Thanks to all of you joining us via YouTube tonight. Thanks to the folks on Facebook. We are live on Facebook, uh, Spoon FM, that's Spoon TV on Facebook with over half a million followers. Uh, we're also live on Fabric TV, and we're live on Super TV as well. So it's a good thing to be here tonight. I want to welcome every single person joining us tonight. Um, I see my cousin, my, my cousin, uh, Miss Fatima uh, Bintu Sirleaf is here. Thanks for joining Again, um, yes, so sorry for that break in. Sorry to our folks out there. It's a good thing that we're back on. Um, yes, you know, technology has its own uh, uh, pitfalls, you know, as much as we all expect that it will be perfect. Sometimes uh, that's not the case. All right, but I want to say thanks to all of you joining us tonight. Um, it's a good thing that you've made up time to be here with us on uh, the Spoon Talk tonight. Um, so I see Mr. Dwalu is in the background. I'm going to bring him on. So uh, we welcome you guys. And then I'm going to bring the updates here very shortly. Mr. Dwalu, welcome to the show. It's good to have you on tonight, sir. How you doing, man? How you doing? How you doing? We are loving yeah. today. We are loving today. What's up? <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm doing good, and um, as usual, I'm here, and uh, mm -hmm. I see your uh, red, white, and blue, a little touch it's of shiny, green. It's shiny today. <laughs> I'm loving it. Mr. Collette, yeah. how's Liberia? How do you weather? The weather is good. I heard you're getting a lot of corn right now because it's raining. Is that true? Yeah, the, the, the corn getting stable small, small. I tell you, Mr. Dwalu, okay. you know? Uh yeah. Uh, 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 in, in my community, usually uh, we've had a situation where we have the current in the day and in the night there's no current. But surprisingly, yeah. Yeah. at some point there was there was current in the middle of the night. I'm told, and and so okay. it's, it's getting better, and the weather is changing as well. So uh, we expect That's that good. everything will happen in line with that. Well, if you who don't know. Uh, I believe Liberia just um, signed an agreement to expand the solar farm and to expand the hydro to about 123 uh, megawatts of power. So there's an expansion going on with solar panel and all the stuff. So we're doing good. It's looking good. Stay tuned. Welcome to the show. Bro. Break up. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not Dwaru, you try. Dwaru, you try. I try. I beat you. I keep. You got today's show, Uba. 
I, I, I love it. Well, that's all I grew up. But why don't you try? You try. I see that you got love. I got, got love, love I got love for the place. But I you can love. make it. <laughs> you can no, make I'll it. make it. What? <laughs> I'll make it. But still, why are you doing that? Let me recognize the early birds. But I'm I do nothing. Stay. I'm just saying that you can't make it. You can't I'm doing it. And we're here. And we're here. You're thinking we're here and we're loving it. Like, we're going to get better. You're shifting. You're shifting. You're shifting, you're shifting Dwali. No, you're you sharing the show. You're saying it will be hot. Dwali, we can see that you're shifting, Dwali. You're shifting the hand now. Well, and, and you're going to tell your own, I will tell my own. Hey, Joe Bear, my brother Bear, welcome. Yeah, Eric welcome welcome your people. I, listen, I'm not well. I'm not well, but I will make it. I came on the show as a sick yeah. person, but, you know. Hey, Sky, Philip Bala, Mr. Bala, how are I you? I remember him a bad guy. You still got your two uh, minutes. Uh, Daniel G, Slay, hey, Mr. Hey. Slay, Kuko. Like, where people say you remain here? Promise <laughs> G, Kazulu, Fatima, Bina, Sully. My own Jew, what's going on, Fatima? It's a pleasure to always have you on. This part where Stanton says, I see Doris Toti, patient Maya Dungan. How are you doing? I see Maya too. Sweetness. What kind of name that, Mama? Emmanuel Thorpe. How are you? Abe Brema. Uh, Ruth Samuel Kia. Aloysius Nelson. My beast sister, Amy Boti. Madam Boti, how are you doing? I see Clarence Bensey. Uh, we got a bunch of people coming on the show. You see Gay Floyd P. Mawo. Jackson, J.W. Johnson, Rebecca Carver. My sister, Rebecca Carver, how are you doing out there, I believe, in New Jersey? Uh, Matthew E. Green, Green, Mr. Green, Levetu, Shuri. I see Contuan D. Yala, Mr. Yala, Mary Chie, Jesse Foma, Moses Holder. I see over here, Fofi Dukle, Mr. Dukle, how are you doing? Uh, I see, let me go over here, Masa Khan and Wusin. Malam Hussein, welcome to the show, Henry B. Kendima. How are you, Clara Way Howard? My own wife, how are you doing there, Clara? I see Prince Mavi Jacobs, Miyama Binda. I see Garmin Harris. How are you doing, Garmin? What's going on, T Max? Welcome to the show from across the country. My people in far away places such as Maryland, San Luis County, my beloved River says, from Nima County. Everybody may just share the show. We got a hot show today. Liberia is gradually going in the direction that we so desperately want, and we are sad about this. Let's keep pushing the issue. My bigger thing is we should not waver because corruption does bite back. We want it to bottom high. And I hope Mr. Uh, the Asset Recovery uh, Chairperson is prepared for this. And I ask him this very question on the show. He's saying he's prepared. But we will test him and see if he's prepared. Tina KSR, how are you doing? Thomas Koto. Mr. Koto, welcome to the show. I see Vasco D. Weefer. Uh, Nathaniel Kahia Jr., I believe Kumba Sita Mombuluko. How are you doing, handful? A Kali, welcome to the show. Cleopatra Mighty Clock, a new woman. How are you doing, my man? Prince Yakba Rosulu Wala, how are you? Anthony Jaru Bright, Mr. Bright, welcome to the show. Gaswa Manawan, uh, Isaiah T. Sumo, Dorothy Harvey, how are you doing, Dorothy? Uh, Morgan Zawi, Gabriel, Mr. <laughs> hey, Pazawi, how you doing, baby? Hi, everything, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, I see Fatima. Oh, Fatima, I think I said anything already. See, oh, she's Pazawi. Say, Pazawi, say, why are you not inviting him to come on the show? Pazawi, that, 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 that's an in the view. It's above my pay grade. Stay to answer that question. No, 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 no. Do, 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 don't do that. Do that. Don't, don't do that. That's your show. Don't do that. It's above my pay grade. You bring, in, you bring in Josh Lowe and everybody else that the papa you want to bring in. Hey, my man, lead that team, man. Samuel hey. Dombadna, how are you doing, Sam? Welcome to the show with my people. GSA Junction B, shout out to my boys. That, my fellow men, all these guys at GSA Junction, up in Bonal Farm, Grand Basso County. Your hell of your country, they plenty. My brother Patakali, I love you like a brother out there in Texas. Welcome to the show, my brother James Golakpai. Mr. Golakpai, Domini Doyan, welcome to the show. Thomas Ansumana, JD Doyu, how are you doing? Samuel Na, I think I said your name already. Ernest Morba, Mr. Morba, welcome to the show. A Badio, E Othello, David III, Israel Jackson, everybody, man. See, these guys are having a power. I love it. I love it. I love it. McGill talking trash. We are here to address those today. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Share the show. What kind of talk? Like, be matters. So, do I do you feel it? I feel you. 
Now, my game, you put your mother on that, right? My game, you talking trash. You get defending today, but you'll be ill. That's the way you talk. I can't remember you. No, 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 no. I'm not here to defend my game. You see, Dwaro, it's an early shot. Don't do that. Oh, okay. Don't attack me. I, I just here to ask a fair question. Dwaro, that's what makes Spoon talk so interesting. Yes, I can. That, that one woman show. That you say your own, I say my own, and we go right. in peace. Yeah. That woman show. But I will always be on the side of the Liberian people. I agree. Do I, this, I see that you I see that you shifting. I have come to enter into your 30 minutes. I have come to debunk you into your 30 minutes. I have come to reduce the volume of your talking points into this 30 minutes. Hmm. The first 30 minutes of the show is yours. So everyone that joined early will enjoy Dualu. Uh, the first 30 minutes. You were in the U.S. military. I was in the U.S. military. No problem. <laughs> you respect my time that I put in, and I will respect yours. At least I put my foot in the door. What you said, Nelson, did you put a foot in the door? Nelson did it. <laughs> so today we want to say that the same thing with the army wife. Let me share the army wife information. The investigative report from the Senate. Uh -huh. We have it. The one that President Jose Yima Baga said in two weeks, mm -hmm. the Labrand people will have it, we have it. So we'll give it to the Labrand people. Yeah. We'll share with them. Mm. We will also speak to the Chris Smith, Congressman, mm. Chris Smith press release hmm. on President Joseph Yima Bwaka. They are holding the president to the war and economic crime court commitment. And the congressman yesterday released the statement. Chris Smith. Dwaru. Today's show, after today's show, today is what Wednesday, I will take the rest of the weeks off. The rest of all the days, the rest of the week, Dwaru, I'll take it off. I will let you have your own time. Because I got to put everything out there. Speak now or forever hold your peace. I saw yes indeed, sedition gathered to the sacrament tree. Oh, the you know, speak of Fulati Kofa. I saw that, you know, Yaga Kodoba is a sedition now. I, I saw that uh, Nathaniel Fallon Miguel. Senator from my game is speaking. They're jittering. They're jittering. I love I saw it. So that they begin to recalibrate and rejuvenate. It will never taste power again. I, I saw the forces coming together to speak on Patrick Sudo tonight. Mm. We will be speaking on Patrick Sudo tonight. Mm. Tonight, we will be speaking. Calling Patrick Sudo. Nelson, can you get a video? It's in the chat room, Nelson, in our chat room. That they confiscated Patrick Sudo car and all Finabono cars. No, and, car will return. There was not confiscated and, Patrick Sudo car. You no, no. You say your own. I say my own. No problem. Words have meaning. Thank I you. can pause if you want to talk. I wait you talk. That when you hear my we want to talk. Yeah, but you're not saying it right. You're behaving as though no, 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 no. I, I will not. I will not accuse you of saying it wrong. You say the way you know, uh, and yeah. let me say the way I know. That one no matter. Do I do? If we want to do the one man show, then we we'll go. Then we we'll go back to the drive through, the McDonald drive through. <laughs> I don't think you want to take us to the McDonald drive through. Oh, no, that way you say, man. no, let go. Go ahead, G. Yeah. So let me say my own. Let me be free to speak like I know. Say your own, G. Yeah, I see that you're shifting, Dwalu, but I'll come there. Shifting the Hana. You are shifting, Dwalu. Okay, tell your own. I know you're on your way back to Liberia. I'm not going to attack you, but yeah. I'm not attacking Dwalu. At the appropriate time, I will. No problem. I'll say, but you'll be feeding lions or fake lions and tiger again. So I'm not going to attack you, my brother. I love you, Dwalu. The Army Wives Investigative Report, Mr. Dwalu, I already dropped it in the chat room. Five pages. Yep. The one that they would say is classified. There's nothing classified about that. We got to share it with the folks. Nothing classified. The asset recovery, property retriever. I am concerned 
I know you want to attack me, my brother, daughter, but I am concerned. Are they on the right path? Is this the proper way to go? Patrick Sudo is mad. So we'll call Patrick Sudo the former police IG. The car Patrick Sudo, that car, what year is that car? How much did he pay for it? Who devalued the car? Who devalued the car? We got all the information. Yeah. Uh, the Congressman Chris Smith press release of the World and Economic Crime Court. And one important thing I want to take note of, Amara Conan, Senator Amara Conan, post on Facebook about NASCAR and Sylvester Grisby. Senator Amara Conan speaking to the issue on Orchid FM today. We need to have this conversation. And these are the many talking points we have for you today. Sit back, Bill Carson, as always, uh, let me tell you something, Bill. I, I don't know how you know Dualu, but I'm going to give him help tonight. Seriously, I must tell you this. Domba Ketty Domba, welcome. Maurice Johnson, welcome. Dualu, I have welcome all of his friends. Let me welcome my friends. Vivian Eastman. Vivian Eastman said, hey, Stanton, you're not sick again? Jay Bone Breaker, I'm sick by half the car. Hmm. Right, it's too big. And you know, Labra is too big. Daniel Zli, Gusibili Patawiki. Yeah, I was pointing the menu, Odwalu. That one, brother, ask me to pronounce the menu, skip it. How many people there? Pronounce it now. Ma Patagoli? I'm Mr. Patagoli, don't know what? Oh, you pronounce it well. What do you mean you pronounce it well? I said, my man, go ahead. All right, let me try, let me try, let me try. Can you check in the chat room to see whether I put that thing that Dwalu I'm trying to. Please, please. Real quick. please. But stay on my man, you, you, you're bringing the tempo of the show down. So this assignment is beyond the bounds of anything I can ever imagine. I'm loving this. Talking about it's illegal. My girl was shake. That's somebody who got fever, and I love it. I never say anything was illegal, Dwaru. I mean, I'm right here. The show is recorded. I never say anything was illegal. Okay, well, that be it. So I know you got different intentions since you came back from Liberia. You have smoked that pot, so therefore you won't come and have some stuff, though. No. I hear that. I hear. No, you can do that, Dwaru. I have never said anything contrary to things being illegal. I am going to send this to you right now, Nelson, for the sake of the good order of the day. I'm going to send this to you. This is the report that was done. Nelson, I'm not even sending it to you. I just put it in the chat room. This is the Army Watch report, the investigation that was done when they did that, uh, 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 how you call it, demonstration protest, military style protest, and the president called for an investigation. I just dropped a report. You got it right, Dwaru, in our general report. report. Yeah. Good. Now you got it. Let's talk. I, I, I'm concerned, Dwaru. Let's say you put a video up. I'm concerned. I want us to show some of the goodness of this program today. What we take our time. Uh, Dwaru, let's get get to some side issue. Uh, is uh, Yeke Koluba now a full flex edition? Dwaru? Look, Stanton, Yeke is a Liberian citizen that wants the greatest things for Liberia. Going to CDC party headquarters does not make one a sedition. <laughs> Let me tell you something, CDC is fiddling everywhere. They're, they're terrified because they know the acquisition of wealth was illegal. And let me dispel this, this narrative that being pushed by Miguel, which is a total lie. That government cannot seize your property until you go through the adjudication process. That is not true. If something is suspected of being personal at the time, it can be taken, put into storage until it's adjudicated. So if you stole something from the government and the government deems that you stole something from a private citizen, they can seize that property until they determine the true value of who that property belongs to. There's nothing illegal about it. This is perfectly legal. If my girl never had a part of prison yesterday, now my girl your own nations, he has to explain to the government how he acquired that wealth. You should stop lying to the Liberian people. We are here to say it straight ahead of my brother suffer too long. We will make this country right. Talk out of a way. And see this thing coming back to power. They can have all the power I want. But I won't stand up. But Dwalu, all right, so let me see if I will agree with you, Dwalu. If what you are saying is true, where is the law of the land? Okay. Ask the lawyers. Let me tell you something. If you're selling drugs, let me give you this example. But, but Dwalu, you can't, you, can't, you can't do that with me. I know you're men of principle. 
Mm -hmm. If what you are saying is true, what, I mean, what's the law of the land? Can you show us something that you can just stop somebody driving a vehicle and say, this is a government vehicle with CCNA? Okay, let me ask you a question. Can you answer my question? No, yes, you can. If it is, if there's sufficient. Well, can you point to the law? Can you point oh, to the school? Can you point to the guidelines? Can you point to the eyes? Ask me a question. I gotta explain myself. If stand your own I have that on your head, and it and, and you see that how with me and say this is my hard loss, and the government, the government say, oh, stand on hard loss. We saw the thing on Dwalu here. We're not saying this is not Dwalu's heart. Even though Senator is claiming ownership of this heart on a Liberian law, the government can hold the heart until it is determined that the heart actually belongs to Senator. That is legal. Go low in the law and you determine what I want there. We give me policy around with stolen property. If you're a drug dealer and the government catch you with drugs, the government will seize the drugs, <laughs> the, whole property, the property is confiscated, and then you go to court. Taking the property is not entirely mean the government owns the property. It has to be adjudicated after the facts, and then they determine who owns that property. There's nothing illegal about that, especially if you never had that property to begin with. Not every the point of section 4.5 in the law. They call the lawyers, they will do that one. Oh, I want it. I want the property seized. God, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You just want people to do for you all day. And why people ain't got no food in the country, no running water, no legislative, no sanitation. Then you're talking about CDC, they're going to get caught all the power they want. The mistake like when people made, they will not make that mistake again to bring these hoolums to power. Literally, the loot of the country in every way imaginable. You're not supposed to talk it. When you talk it, they say, Oh, hey, daddy, you know, you can go to Labra. Yeah, we're going to Labra. Labra, what I want? Nonsense. Now that jungle justice there, my brother, seizing the property and holding the property in trust until you go to court is done everywhere around the world, even in these United States where you live. If you own the property and it's determined that property was stolen, they seize the property, they hold the property in trust until the property is adjudicated. That is perfectly legal under Liberian law. Liberian law is a piece and copy of American law. Go there. You take some of the property, they will hold that property until they determine who that property belongs to. If the government of Liberia believed Prophet Sulu took a car from government that he did not properly pay for, the government can seize the property until the government determines that the property will properly pay for. There's nothing illegal about that. Welcome to the show, my brother Asi Let me go get some water. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It sounds like you're hot already. Nelson. Yes, sir. What a man, what a man making noise about. Yeah, so um, he sh he's sharing his thoughts on um, the recent uh, action of the tax force uh, from the GSA. The seizure of the former uh, IG's uh, vehicle. You know, so it's actually one of the big happenings in the country today. So that's what he's talking about. And, uh, yeah, diverse views on this issue. And so... Well... So are people suggesting that the vehicle is not supposed to be seized? Yeah, there are others who think that, you know, um, a lot has is to be done offering... to investigation before uh, such an action is taken. So uh, there is this mixed view on uh, that particular issue. I think Mr. Dwalu is back. <laughs> yeah, is anybody offering up any reference of the law to say that the action cannot be taken? What, se what section are you referring to, Dwalu? You are muted. You are muted, you are muted sir. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to quote session. What I'm going to quote is common sense. I said about talk about let's let's go back and forth. There's not a lot of people here. If I came to your house and I stole your TV from there, and it's determined that there is a TV that I stole and it catch the rule, do the government take the property and hold the property until they determine who owns that TV? Yeah, government has the right to Thank you. to to for property seizure, whether they hold it in safekeeping or whether right. it's an absolute seizure. They have yeah. that, that right to do it. Exactly. I'm going to stand there freezing in your house. Uh, I'm not too well. I've had two yesterday. If oh, you don't yes. want me on the show, I can step aside because I know you happy you get your friend, brother. 
Jerry Limit Pierre coming on, so you don't want me. So I know when you guys I, play this thing. No, no, when you guys play this thing, then you are then you pretend as if to say no, no, no. We get the announcement seven hundred years ago. Uh, when you guys play this thing, then you are like to say I should leave. If you want to come, baby, say Jerry Limit Pierre, you can go ahead. But Jerry Limit Pierre know very well I will come very hard today because of everything that is going on in the country, and I think the Liberian people want me here. I'm a if you and your brother, Mr. Dwight, don't want me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, bro. My head is hurting, you know. I got cold and everything. Uh, if you don't want me, I leave. My Seriously. man, if you sick, if you sick and you don't feel well and you are talking all of your head, we can let you go. If you you lie, I'll stay here. You lie, I'll stay here. I'll go nowhere. You lie, I'll go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's it's okay. You don't but have your location, so you are not spread the virus. So you fine. Why all the houses are putting in Liberia CDC in court meeting, but they see one property CDC court B meeting. Why? I say you are sedition. You know how they're putting a thing. All right, so we're gonna have your limit here. He's in studio. We we'll get a few minutes. Let him settle. Let him get a bottle of water. I'm like, listen, listen. You gonna entrap somebody, not me, okay? And we always gonna discuss everything. It's good to have the information minister, Jeremy Mapier, on the show again. All right? We're going to talk about everything you are hearing as Liberian. Please share. I want you to invite your brothers and sister. It's going to be a tough talking show. It's going to be rough because you know why? The immediate past government, they are angry. I love hey, it. I said, bye. We're hearing something. I love it. Can no, we, I'm trying to do? sell my... Jeff Mitchell yeah. says, Spawn, I said, okay. they are I so angry. Time. And what happening is that at the end of the day, they seize the former IG car, Patrick Sulu. It's at GSA right now. Patrick Sulu is so mad. He says, Stanton, I want to appear on the show. Patrick Sulu is so mad because he said he bought the car from GSA, a 2016 car. I mean, if in a street he bought a car from GSA, give us our 30 seconds each before we bring in Minister Pierre. Let's talk about this issue. Asset recovery. Emmanuel Gongo, my own friend and brother. Mr. Wilson, my own friend and brother. They went on the street. They're stopping all the cabinet. They're stopping all the cars. Patrick Sulu had visitor from the United States in a car. They stop him. They say, put him down. But what, what, why am I even talking about Patrick Sulu? Let me get tough for you, sir. Let me call Patrick Sulu. Oh, let me not come here live? No, 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 no. Uh, we got, we got Jerry Limit Pierre. Maybe a man in front of Jerry Limit. So mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I will bet Jerry Limit to pause a little bit. Let me see if he will come live. But let me call Patrick. Because... Duaru, we should be fair and objective on the show. This is one talk. This is not a draft, McDonald. George Lobo Cabin, don't tell you I call it a draft, McDonald. But we should be fair. Because if he bought the car, Andrew Mama, how you doing? We have the document. Mirror brought sign on the document. Why are they taking the car from him? He didn't walk away. He didn't walk away. I'm not defending Patrick Sudo. I'm defending the law. Patrick Sudo said he will call back. He's coming on. So let, you know what? Let's just bring in Jerry Limit. When Patrick Sudo call, we can bring in Patrick Sudo. Let's bring in the minister, right, Guadu? Or you want to ask something quick? No, I mean. I said, why? You want to say something quick before we bring in Minister Pia? You are muted, as they always try to unmute, please. And he can address all the different concerns you got with the government? Yeah. Okay. Andrew Mama, you want to say something before we bring in Minister Pia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Uh, I'd like to say good evening to everybody all around the world. And Liberia is uh, on the right path. We either do it straight now or we don't do it at all. And I just want to say to Liberians that um, nobody should feel offended, nobody should feel bad. What is happening now is to set 
a country straight. So let's 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 give people the chance to do their job. So thank you. Stand up, Matthias this again. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm gonna say this first and foremost. The intentions of the rescue mission is unfolding, and I love it. I want to say this to my president, sir, do not waver. We need this so desperately. Everybody who's saying, you remember when your time moved from there, they were all the year two, they will go after They should go after them when their time moved from there. In fact, it forces the issue that when you're serving in government, you will not take government proceeds and government assets and use it for yourself. If, they, if, they, if, they, if they, this is a culture now that we're going to establish, it's a good culture. Let's celebrate it. There is no wish hunting here. If they take your property, they're not seizing it. They are holding your interest until you can actually explain through the legal process how you acquire those properties. There's nothing wrong with that. Absol absolutely legal. Stanton. Thank you very much. On that Stand note, Stanton, quickly. Before the man come, I think we need to differentiate these different efforts that are going on, right? There's the GSA, um, Government Recovery, of vehicles, which can be separated from, I believe, from the asset recovery program that the government has set. Sure. So I hope we can get that distinction from one of the features of government, who's doing what. There may be some overlap because some people in the who work directly with GSA may be on the asset recovery team. But what vests are they wearing? What, what authority clothes are they wearing at that particular time when some things are happening? I think we need some explanation there. Because in my mind, if the bigger asset recovery program is just focus on getting cars, they don't know what kind of recovery we're really doing. So thank you very much. You know, yeah. I have a, let me say this. Uh, so Patrick Sudi is driving to the studio. We have the Minister of Information, General Lima Pierre. He's already seated. We'll be bringing him on. I beg Patrick Sudi to go to the studio to bring him online because he heard what you said, Dwaru. You say you want him online. So we'll bring him online. This will be very interesting today, sitting in front of Jeremy Pierre, the information minister. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to welcome Jeremy Pierre, but let me show you this document. We'll keep it when Patrick Sudo come on. Yes, the document. Patrick Sudo said, listen, I got my document. Signed by Mary Bro, signed by the Director General of Operation, signed by the National Fleet Management Director. I bought this car. It was issued October 21st, 2021. Wow. I bought it. I got my document. Why are you taking the, the cars from me? Why are you disturbing my life? Patrick Sudo will come and ask this question. He will ask Jerry Pierre in studio. He will look in Jerry Lima Pierre's face and say, Mr. Minister, why are you guys disturbing our life? Let's bring in the certain, the current information minister, Jerry Lima Pierre. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Mr. Pierre. How are you doing today? Mr. Pierre, sorry if I mispronounced your name, but welcome to the show. Are you hearing me? Or somebody you got your mute? Okay. So yeah, thank you. Uh, but the first thing I love, I love to start with. I, I I thought you invited me as the minister of information to have conversations around some of the issues you've raised here. If that plan is changing to bring a Patrice through at all. Not a guest. That's not something that I take kindly to, and I accept to that. So hold on like, one minute. Let, hold on one minute. If let me give you. Oh, Jerry, let me, hold on one minute. I'm coming. Let me learn. Let me learn. No, let me you have a story. good point. Let me just let me tell you exactly what happened now, Jerry. Let You make it a very good point because you are the guest. You represent the government. You came in that capacity. It's okay if Patrick Sudo have anything to say. We can call him later after you leave. My business is not high. This is how we run the show. I don't want to put you in a situation that would be so, so, so bad. Uh, like my brother said. The situation yeah. that you cannot handle, even though I'm sure I can handle every situation. No, no, I don't want to add it that. I remember what I Yeah, it's not only just a matter of, you know, mutual respect. I respect all of you on the panel. You called me as a guest. Public Studio has an issue you can address it another time, not to come with a disruption in what you've called me to do. That's my point. That's fair. Thank you. And, and it's respected. So we're going to, I know when we, when we're eating our yoga, Gary on the side, we can have this conversation and, and butt head. But this is official business. Let her know it that way. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Jerry Limick. Let's talk on the issue of what is happening in the country. Since we want to move Patrick Sudo for later in your absence, let's talk about what just happened in Liberia today, the asset recovery. 
the argument that we saw Nathaniel Fallow McGill, the senator from McGibby County, the speaker, Jeffonati Kofa, the CDC chairperson, Kau, Janga Kau, and the rest of them gather under the sacrament tree and saying, we will fight the news, this, this news of asset recovery, that you can stop people, take the folks out of the car and seize the car. Minister Pierre, address the nation tonight. Help us understand the step by the asset recovery team. Are they in the right direction, sir? So let, let me refresh the memory of our people to start with. In 2017, I was uh, one of the officials of government who left office. Uh, the fleet management exercise or program of the government started under the Saliva administration. The principal administrator of the program was Mary Brown. Fortunately, when the transition took place, Mary Brown was maintained at the GSA. And meaning she was very knowledgeable about the free management program that she spearheaded. Unfortunately, even as she sat there, the new government announced a general policy to say, okay, we know they had a fleet management exercise, but we want to be able to verify what took place under that exercise. So if you if you bought a car, if you're one of those who bought a car, report all the cars that were bought, bring them. Also come with your receipt. I was one of those who bought an old car, very old car. I think in the end, they gave it to somebody at the Ministry of Information. It was smoking with the industry. Eventually, they abandoned it. The money was paid directly to the central bank. You have the flag received from the central bank. We wanted to be law abiding people. Dozens of us, Julia Duncan, Cassell, myself, Dr. Clarence Moneyback, people turned their cars in because they said they wanted to verify whether you were one of those who bought a car or not. That so called verification process never ended. I never got my car back. I never got the money back. Clarence Moneyback, for example, the presidential candidate in this going election was openly disgraced in real life. They saw him in the car. They approached him, escorted him to his house in Painesville at the gate. He got down from the car, walked into the gate. They took the car away. The people executing those orders, along with a tax force that they established, was headed by the police. And Patrick Sulu was the head of the police. It is gracing in the street. They did that to many other persons. Now, that kind of gross, gross disrespect and right violation that they carry out comes back to home then, but not in any intentional way. Because at least when we left office, government could see cars. You don't have. The team is receiving tips from many places as to where cars are. Patrick Sulu car, I don't want to talk about him in particular because I say I don't want him to be the issue. But if the team got some suspicion about his car and thought that they should have it, and he believes that the car was, first of all, there are a few things you got to look at, Stanton. On the fleet management process, there's a left span that a car should reach before you sell it. It is not that you sell just any car. So if I bought a car that has not reached that left span, it can be verified. Right. Now that Patrick card is taken, since that's the issue, if it is verified that it is not within that circle of period that a car is eligible to be sold, then there was a breach of the law in the first place. So if he is convinced that everything was done consistent with the policy, that the car has spent the, 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 the number of years that it's supposed to spend before being bought, and that it was properly evaluated and, 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 and the payment fall into the law, of course, when they evaluate, he gets his car back. If it is determined that that is not the case, it means that the policy was violated and such car will be seized permanently. There's no question about that. All right, so let's let me remove Patrick Sudo car. No, I'm good though. You muted. Well, I'm not hearing. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. I got to wear it. You got to hear you. Oh, okay. Am I good now? Yeah, I'm hearing you. All right, thank you. So let's get. I want us to settle this Patrick Sudo car today and the entire asset recovery because. 
we got a lot to discuss. We have a lot to discuss. I will just flag this for you to see. One, the Army Wife investigation. Two, asset recovery, which we're doing now. The U.S. Congressman Chris Smith press relief on war and economic crime court. Senator Americana Post, director or indirectly, talking about the NASCO and Sylvester Grisbury issue. So <clears throat> just to let you know while you take notes, these are the general conversation. I, Jumama, you got to wear yours, though. Maybe you need to wear your headset. I think I think uh, Jerry Lima can hear me. Can you hear me, sir? All right. Good. So, so yes, the issue. Let us address the asset recovery, sir. Um, the issue about Patrick. Yeah, I, I, I want to beg your pardon. I want, I want to beg your pardon. I, I've seen your talking points. I want to beg your pardon to add one because your platform has elevated that issue very substantively in the past several days. And that is what it, what 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 people believe is happening at local and i want you to add that thank you we will let me just we will add local and also we bring in the 4500 dollars as well so now we make it like a six talking point thank you very much minister yes. let's talk yeah i mean you see i'm gonna add one i add one from Dwadu. Dwadu just yeah, said it's me i no. I have my own eye on no problem <laughs> thank you <laughs> so let's talk about let's talk about patrick sudukai we'll bring the guys in uh, Joe Limit, though, they say in three years, you talk about the statute, okay, the length of time. I just received information, it's three years. This vehicle in question was brought in by the current IG, Gregor Coleman. It's a 2016 vehicle. When Gregor Coleman was leaving, he turned it over to Patrick Sudo. Patrick Sudo used the vehicle until 2021. It had mechanical problem, body work problem, oh. and it was down. Are we good? Okay. And it was down. So being that it was down, Patrick Sudo said, listen, I bid to buy it, and I pay for it. As you can see, the document is here. Can you speak to us? Was that a problem from Mary Bro selling this vehicle to Patrick Sudo? Was it on a value? What are you hearing from GSA? Why couldn't the asset recovery team go after Mary Bro and the guys that sold the vehicle, but then arresting Patrick Sudo vehicle, sir? Can you again explain, sir? They didn't have asset recovery team, but they didn't go after Mary Bro. They put that money back down from his car and took the car away. I lawfully, I follow a lawful order because when the government gives order, it's lawful. And turned over a car that probably some lawyers told me I had no cost turning over because I had already received that a car was bought on a government program. I had to respect the authorities. I took it in. Now, here's the difference. They took my car consistent with all the requirements laid down by the policy. They took it away. They took the money away. On this current exercise, if the evaluations are done and it is determined, that the car was procured, and not just about Patrick Carr, but anybody else who will fall in similar category. Because we are a lawful government and respect people's right and the law. If it is determined that you met all of the requirements under the policy for which you bought the car, it's going to be returned to you. In their case, no evaluation. That's why you said you wanted to do. Took the cars, took the money, and everything. That's the difference. But to, to, to make a, a, a decision that, look, we begin to uh, seize cars. A lot of cars are missing. Government entities, I'm at the Ministry of Information. That ministry has only one car. It's the car that I drive. No other car in the ministry. Not even utility car. And that goes from ministry to ministry. Look, how do you, Stanton, honestly, take over a government? The offices are empty. Where I sit now to make that office comfortable I had to depend on me. On Saturday this weekend, I'm bringing down the ceiling in the place at my own cost. Daniel Sando, he's the only deputy minister that has confirmed along with me. He personally took the initiative of being sure that he wants to sit in a decent place to work. He has furnished his own office. That's just an example of the Ministry of Information. It cuts across the government. Look, if, if, if only some of you were here to see what we see, and you got a very powerful media outlet, Stanton, Spawn is a powerful outlet. Make it a project. Two government ministries and agencies, 
do your independent assessment from what we say, and you will be stunned as what as to what we have inherited. So, in that kind of desperate situation, you want to make sure that some of the assets that are retrievable, you make some effort to retrieve them. Notwithstanding, if you take these initiatives like seizing cars and all of that, there's one assurance I can give you as the spokesperson of the government, that if the evaluations are done, if the assessments are done, and it is determined that you procure that vehicle or whatever it is consistent with the policy, it's for you. When it is determined that there was a breach of the policy and that the state was robbed, those assets will be retrieved permanently. That's why. Right, thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Let me bring in Mr. Duadu. We'll go to Asifa and Anjimama while the rest of the guys are on. Mr. Duadu, shoot with your two questions, sir. Yeah, Mr. Minister, um, welcome to the show. It's Daniel Bayo. I went way back. Blow you. I poke the bus for low. And if Bazo is starting scared, you say you want him to leave the show because he know as if I too bad a Bazo man, you Bazo man. So you think you're coming to Bazo man here? But let me say that people were asking me what's the law to seize property. In 2016, Liberian government, the president at the time, signed a law called the AML CFT law. Let me read a paragraph in the law. It says, on May, on May 2nd, the president of Liberia signed into law a law anticipated bill to counter money laundering and terrorism financing, which is the AML CFT law. I will look up and get the details of the law. The act, which includes amendment to various other law, will provide more effective legislation, tools, with which to fight corruption, money laundering, and other financial crimes. The new act will provide the legal basis to establish a financial intelligence unit as a central coordinating agency in this effort, provide better tools for authority to seize and free assets of proceeds of a crime and improve cooperation information sharing. So yes, they can seize your property, there is a law. I will get more detail as you will listen up. But let me ask you a question, my first question to you, Mr. Minister. And, and do you think it's a good practice or should we abolish a law where government officials can purchase previously used government cars. Don't you think it's a conflict of interest? I I, I, I don't think so. Uh, and the sale of those cars are not restricted to government officials. They are open beyond government officials. Uh, so it depends on the interest that others will have. One of the reasons that informed our policy during the Saliva administration since I worked there and I was one of the administrators. At one point, I was assistant minister of the Ministry of Gender. We realized that when the vehicles get older, the cost of maintenance is high. You eventually end up spending more money on the very old vehicle as opposed to if you are to sell it to have some proceeds to the government. In the end, you spend to the extent that you could almost buy the same vehicle. So the wisdom was, once the car has depreciated to the point where it becomes a burden on the government, when you sell it on that fleet management exercise, the money paid directly into government's coffers, it is a way of at least getting something out of a government property that has depreciated. Now, that was the wisdom. Does it mean that it cannot be revisited? It is left with the wisdom of the people in the sector. If they believe that that wasn't a wise decision, and that it needs to be visited fine. But I, I, I sincerely believe that the, the wisdom behind that kind of policy measure was proper because, because as a man who was in administration, sometimes we got tired. People face the car, but man, you come sometimes after one month, dwell the car, gone by. Another huge cost. Yes. In the field of an eye, what you spend on that car, my brother, you could just ask some small money there and start to buy a new car. Yeah, so that informed that policy, and in my opinion, as of the time, I thought it was good. Yeah, it I, doesn't mean we are stuck there. If they want to change it, if there's a need to revisit it, there's a need to evaluate it, considering all the controversies surrounding it, that could be fine. But I thought uh, the justification for having that policy was good at the time. I, I believe that's a that's a ridiculous policy because it costs the government so much money. I'll tell you the reasons why. If somebody working in government, they can do whatever they want to the car, knowing that they're going to purchase this car. What most other organizations do, most best practice, you get... Unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not hearing you because you're breaking and you can hardly hear what you're saying. Stanton, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me on the show? You guys can hear me. Everybody can hear me. I think in the studio, there must be some backlog. But what I'm trying to say is this. Hopefully, you can hear me. I'm very loud here. Most best practices around the world, organizations will buy the vehicles from the government 
based on certain criteria that they've met, and those organizations can sell into private entities instead of empowering individuals, instead of individuals who work in government purchasing vehicles for themselves. I'll wait till he come back because the issue here is everybody say, oh, it, the cost, the cost to maintain this vehicle center. Since 2007, I've always had two vehicles in Liberia. I don't spend a lot of money on repair costs because it's my own vehicle and I know how I drive them. Because when they're government vehicle, people yet drive them all kind of way. That makes a PR come back on my second question for him. But I will continue to say this. I know it's expensive to maintain vehicles in Liberia, Mr. So it was, it was better. I think the intern that year was failing. So that was yeah. the problem. It was so not let, let me repeat my point very quickly. I yes, think sir. you should sell the vehicle to a major entity, like a car dealership in Buck, and then Mr. P. I can go to that entity and purchase the vehicle from that entity instead of selling it to individual government official. It's a recommendation. Yes, my second question. To Fine you. recommendation, but let, let also get it that the policy does not restrict the sale of the car to government official. Yeah, and I think it should. But let me say this, Mr. Pia. The perception of the government so far is not something that I like. This is our baby. We fought for this wholeheartedly. What do you make up the perception that is grooming in the country that there are money going around without any accountability? Should we tackle this perception? If it is I, I'm sorry, Mr. Duardo. Can we finish your asset recovery? Because let's stick with the talking point. It will help us. You did remember, I had two questions. I remember one question there. Why? Yeah, because, because if we miss up, I mean, except the minister wants us to just choke him from all angles. Okay, let me, let me, let me get back here with the asset recovery. My second question. Yeah. Do you yeah. think the asset recovery, anything about it is illegal? So, at least now we want to talk about asset recovery and not just vehicle recovery. So the mm -hmm. asset recovery is bigger than just the question of vehicle. Yeah. Um, we all should, should accept the fact that this is the right thing to do. And I said to someone at my last press conference, and I think it's the book of Proverbs, I don't quite remember the voice that says, the wicked flees when no one pursues. If interventions like these are made, and I, Jerry Limerick Pia, was a part of an establishment that I left, but I know I'm innocent. I don't get it why I would be in a state of rebelliousness to say, this is wrong, we resist it, we do this. I don't see the basis. If I'm innocent, if I know I've done nothing wrong, and I, I, uh, a kind of measure for accountability is unfolding, I should trust my personal integrity because, you see, I could be able to vouch for myself. But it would be wrong to attempt to vouch for everybody else who served in the government. So I could be innocent. I could have done nothing wrong. But there could be people who breach the public trust. And so determinations are being made. You know, when you establish, I listened to the chairman of the committee when he appeared on your show. People would give tip -up, tips, tips to the, the team. People would give intelligence there'll be ways of blow there'll be different kinds of information that you receive and you process them and they will lead to some of the actions you will take in the end those who have betrayed the trust of the public those who breached the public trust those who done something wrong the determination will be made and they will be the people being held accountable this is an accountability measure how can somebody be saying for the purpose of accountability we won't walk around court we want this. But then you're resisting a particular accountability measure. You can't be cherry picking. You got to be holistic. Accountability is accountability. The police director said at the time, all of the mysterious, mysterious deaths that took place in the country, we're going to look into them. It's accountability. When there are suspicions about people who stole and they want to do an investigation, that's accountability. When people believe that or they have tapes, that assets, were stolen and they want to retrieve them. That's accountability. We must holistically embrace these steps towards accountability. And I think the whole asset recovery concept is a part of the overall measure to ensure accountability. And we must embrace it as a people. Except we just want to be in a virtual cycle where we just say, that move on, that move on, that time pass. We got to start from somewhere. And I have always said, I believe Joseph Waka. President Joseph Waka is in the right place to do so because some of the things that can undermine the political way for leaders to do the right thing is because they waste their time thinking about the prospect of being re-elected. President Waka does not have to be concerned about being re-elected at his age. 
all of us anticipate that he's going to be a one-term president. So the political side of it is not his issue. And if that's not the issue, that's how you revolutionize a nation. Just do the right thing. Because sometimes the right things are resisted. Right? And you're afraid of, ah, the poor resisting it. Even though I know I'm convinced it's the right thing to do, but they're resisting it. It will hurt my re-election bid. It will hurt me politically. And you start dragging your feet, and then everything goes amok. He has an opportunity. And what I see him, as I talk to him every day, he's not going to bend backwards. He's going to ensure that those things that will set the foundation for the fall march of our country will be done uncompromisingly. So have you just given us a breaking news that President Joseph Yimakwaka will not be running again. He has no interest running for the second term. That's what you just told us, Jerry. I mean, Paul laughing, yeah, to say, but I got to you running again. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, I mean, those are out of the year, let them be here. But so, Jerry, let me, again, thank you very much. We're going to stick with the asset recovery. We got six bullet points to cover tonight. I want to say welcome to the show, our sister, Glennie. Paul Kennedy, welcome. Dr. Gopla, welcome. Uncle Sam Jackson is going to join us. Asset door is coming on. So now we're going to move over to Asset Vi. Asset Vi, your two questions on asset recovery, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 Asi. Wonderful. So, my concern is really, firstly, with this, um, how to depreciate the vehicle. What's the purpose of GSA if the government does not have a maintenance section? And we see in the budget significant amount of dollars for maintenance and, you know, lubricants and this and that for these vehicles but yet right now you say you're taking over and limited vehicles around the country so this whole issue it comes back again to accountability it comes back to whether gsa has an asset management system that it can really track these vehicles do they have tracking devices in these vehicles so a whole lot of issues you know, go back to how we run government and how effective is the process we use today. So, you know, then the transparency in the process, right? If somebody is using a car for three years and you depreciate it 30% of the original value every year, that's 10% left. So that car, let's say they bought 117000 in 2016 by government and, and calculation by the end of you know 2020 that car was worth zero so if Patterson bought in 2021 for whatever amount by their by the government's calculation basically you know he should have paid what five dollars for it fifty dollars so the whole process is just stink and corrupt and we need to look at these things to find out what the best solution is, especially if this is a rescue mission, because our whole process is a process of fraud, waste, and abuse. And we have to look at it that way. But to the point of asset recovery, uh, can you run government? Huh? Uh, can we please yeah. mute ourselves, everyone, please? Uncle Sam, can you mute yourself, please? Go ahead, Ava. Thank you. So, Sam, we talk about asset recovery. Can you distinguish between what GSA should be doing in terms of retrieving government vehicles that probably got ownership issues or that was supposed to be transferred from the last government to this government but the previous officials are still driving them versus a true asset recovery process where it's defined where they're going over actual assets that are identified as you know owned by you know previous officials and it's just not vehicle or it's just not residence we're talking about asset recovery that requires real technical people, people who can trace beneficial ownership. It has to do with ownership in companies, you know, shares in different places. So I'm not clear what the process is or what we're doing. Can you clarify those things? So, yeah, good question, Isaac. Um, so the, 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 the GSA... From my own experience, and, 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 and let me not pretend like I, I, I know the law concerning GSA. What I've seen GSA do over the years for the number of time that I've been in government, yeah, vehicles, 
uh, you bring computers in offices, they code them to, because they are government properties. Most of the furniture we use in offices, you know, they do so. They include all the vehicles. But you see, even, even to restrict it to vehicles, uh, retriever, I think the problem with GSA could be capacity, right? Uh, I, I'm not sure they have the capacity to do those kinds of large scale or retrieval of, of student assets. Say people took all the computer from offices they carry. They took all the decks they carry. They took all the laptops and everything they carry away. I think it's a capacity problem. The asset recovery thing has a bigger picture beyond that scope of what the GSA does. I just focuses on vehicles, office materials, and all these kinds of stuff. Gerald Limit PR is perceived to have stolen money and 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 maybe he bought homes. He bought homes with the stolen money. You 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 do all the investigation, you have the facts that th these are the homes he bought as a result of money he stole from government. That home that is bought from wherever it is becomes a government asset. You want to go after it as a government asset. It, it, so that kind of scope is far beyond what a GSA does that is restricted basically to things that we use in our offices, whether they are. They are decks, they are computers, they are vehicles, as we're talking about. So the scope of their work is bigger. But the one reason why I would not want to go very deeper into this is because you had a guy who is responsible for the whole process. You are in here for three, four hours. And all of the technical issues and questions surrounding it, I mean, he should have the answers. And I thought you were engaging, and, and yeah, he did so. I wouldn't come pretending as a minister of information that I know everything about every sector. That's why sometimes. You call the people who are directly involved with the job. And the last time I watched, you had the, the head of the team here. And I'm sure you had the opportunity to give a deep dive into all of these technical concerns as it relates to their job. I mean, if they were not sufficiently done, you can call them by another time. And I'm sure he will unveil himself. Thank you very much. Uh, that, that's both on Isaac. Number, question number two. Your one question was like 100 hours. Go ahead with your second, sir. <laughs> so the issue of these vehicles is like, is there a law that government people have first rights to these vehicles? Because if there were public auction for these vehicles, it would give other people the, 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 the opportunity or possibility to purchase these vehicles. But it seemed like they just dedicated to give it to these government officials for little of nothing. Um, are you aware of what the process I, is? I, and how I, I, say, I, I say there's not a law, but sometimes things are common sense. If I was an ordinary man and I got my small money, I want to buy a car, I'd rather walk to a used car garage and buy a car that I'm very sure of and I know I will survive with. I wouldn't run after a car that one government official has used, carry all around the country. I say, okay, I want to jump part of an auctioning process or bidding process to buy that car. Sometimes it's a question of confidence. You're not sure some of the things is open to everybody, including people in government, whether you can you can transparently compete and 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 and, and get it. So sometimes there's a there's a pushback from people. They just say by and say, No, I don't think you're worth it, right? But there's no law that says Minister, I totally disagree with you with that rationale you bring in forward here. There is no pushback. People are not even afforded the opportunity. It's just getting directly. Yeah, that, that's, to the that's your perception that people are not affording the opportunity. I don't agree with that. I, I certainly don't agree uh, with that. Uh, okay, you're entitled. Uh, uh, all right, all right, let's go ahead, guys. I said, I said, I said, let let the minister answer and we'll give the others a chance to ask their question. Oh, yeah, so so, so that's a part of the question, and I mean that's a part of the issue. You see, sometimes people figure in their minds what kind of answers they want. It, it doesn't work that when you ask me a question, I'll answer it the way I know it, and and. And, and we don't have to go back and forth because you don't agree with my answer. But the point is, you asked me a question, and I'm saying, that's what I think. I say, that, I, I, I mean, it may not be cast in stone. It's not, it's not something that, you know, can be imposed on everybody. But based on the question you asked me, I'm, I'm saying, if I was an ordinary person, I got my small money, I want to buy a car, I'd rather go to a used car garage and buy a car that I'm sure of, than to go compete for cars that I'm not even sure of. So, maybe if you are coming, maybe if you have to do a survey and ask the people in the public and say, why are you not participating in these things so bad? They will tell you why they don't do it. Then that one is scientific because that's what they think. But whatever you and I say is just our thought process. Thank you very much, Minister. Let me bring in our uh, 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 
and and your mama and then we're gonna go, please let can, can we, because we are so many we gotta rotate folks want to come and ask some questions everybody have the question can we please make it short two questions and it will allow us to come in more often please uh minister what do you call it your question man I'd like to welcome you this evening. It's, good, it's always good to have you here. Um, I'd like to ask you, why are these vehicles sold in secrecy? And if I, you know, in secrecy. <laughs> So it comes very bad to ask a question. As it does not believe the process is open enough, he does he's not convinced that people do it about it. And 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 so that's exactly where you come. So I left government six years ago. The current state of vehicles we're talking about were done by the, the government that just left. If they did so in secrecy, they got to answer the question as to why they did it in secrecy. I'm not sure when I left government it was done in secrecy. So maybe somebody from the CDC. Uh, which was the immediate last government on which the policy continued and if you convince that they did it in secrecy they got to answer to why they did it that way okay my second question is also sure do you think we should continue to sell government vehicles to government officials do you think it's a good idea that we should continue to do that like I said from the beginning, I believe the, the the policy to sell depreciated cars was not a bad policy. And because I had a practical first-hand experience as an administrator who was involved with ensuring that government money was spent on maintaining cars, and in the twink of an hour, we realized that the money we spent on maintaining one car that is continuously breaking down can even buy a new car. In in that In that sense, I believe there was wisdom in the policy. But does it mean that we cannot, as a people, review things that we've done in the past, provided we believe it's not working properly? I think we should be open to that. So if it becomes a matter of interest for the government to review whether there's a policy that we want to keep, whether it's been working well, whether it makes sense, it's an option. And and and, and if you ask me, I think the Boaca government should listen to people. And, 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 and if a bulk of our people believe that there's a need to review such a policy, then we should do so. Thank you very much, Andrew Mama. Let me bring in uh, our, our, our own aunt, uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, Glendy, uh, Ambulai, Isidro. Now, we have Paul Kennedy in the back and uh, Dr. Ruder. We have to rotate once they come on. So we'll give you guys a chance to ask the two questions. Rest with the answer recovery. Jump to the next bullet point. Mr. Jackson. Uh, you got you got, you got, got all the Basel people on. I say, uh, I say Tupa, Glendy, Sam Jackson, Duaro. And you put a good man in the back? I, I mean, we can take them off if you suggest. I'll be happy to remove Glenny. <laughs> if you laugh at me. Let Glenny get out of my face, I beg oh, you. Let Glenny oh, get out of my face. I beg you for it. Mr. Jackson, your question, sir. Uncle Sam? Yeah, I, I, I believe that I want to put the boss away, but. Okay, listen to me. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, I said, please don't don't confuse me with that man there. Okay. No, I'm not uh, I made the state said I be and I said the other the other one from CDC. <laughs> okay, so 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 Mr. Minister. Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Minister, let me ask you one, let me ask you one question. The asset recovery team, the asset recovery team, what they were doing the street today, eh? Where they look like little grown-up boys that are going there to go jack people food and jack people car, you know? That that that, that is that the asset recovery team that you that you're playing in your head that you're going to do to go in the street like that, like grown-up people there to be take, taking people car like that, that like the asset recovery there is that is that what you're Government intend to do the higher intent to carry this thing. They as a recovery team, which is a high brow, serious effort. You see there, imagine you're going quite there, other people there going there and jacking people car. Eh? Is that an asset recovery team you're you want doing that bureau? That ain't there. That what you're planning to do. It's a it's a it's a fair thing that you have that perception, and I wish you have criticized. When that very or worse than that took place six years ago, I was a victim. That acquiring money by your friend was a victim. 
And as long as I know you to be, you were silent. You didn't see anything wrong with that. You cannot be cherry picking on what kind of action is good and which one is bad. If you believe that approaching people and, and if, if there are suspicions about people taking government property away, you know, grabbing it is a problem. I thought you saw that Clarence Moneybag was dragged from his car from, from Rayleigh Market, escorted to his gate, pushed into the fence of his house, and the car driven away. He paid for it. He had a fair receipt. I had bought one old car for $3,500, paid the money into central bank account. So you bring the car. They had one guy who ran away from the country. You were all were out in there, some kind of soldier, and, and, and the attacking pool all over the place. And you were there. You saw it. It was bad yesterday. Then it's bad today. If you thought it was good today, why are you having a problem with it today? So no. But to answer your question specifically, you're trying to narrow the whole asset recovery thing to just an incident that you witnessed with taking one car from Patrick Sudo. I, 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 I mean, you, you're my old man. You know, you know I talk to you a lot, I gain a lot of wisdom for you, but you, you got to be holistic in these approaches. You cannot take one case that involves Patrick Sudo and try to draw an analogy that that's what the entire asset recovery program is about. You could have your own problem with Gonkwe and other things you choose to point him out, but 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 no, it's not fair to look at it that way. You had the asset recovery team chairman here, as I said to the other person who asked the question. You had all the time to engage with him. In fact, when I watched the show, all you did was process for him. You know, he's your body, you see, he's your body. I know the man, the man is dead. You needed to hold his feet to the fire and ask all the hard questions. But you lifted him like Jesus entering Jerusalem, Hosanna in the highest. Now you see one situation with Patrick Suru, you use it as a definition to define the scope of an entire work. I think a strong academic like you is unfair to look at things that way. And, 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 and no, I say that's not what the scope and definition of the asset recovery is. Even if you disagree with what you saw today, you don't call people to not people. We got to have respect for one another. Okay, so These are your officials. Yeah. Okay. So I'm okay, so, so, so you want to be like the CDC government. The, the was I on spoon to wait name uh Clarence Moniba I was on spoon TV. Yeah. Do you know my reaction? Do you know what I thought about how I felt about it? You think I was you ask your next ask your next question? Let us not debate that issue. Craziness. It can be debate between you and somebody Let's get ask ask somebody jack the only thing. Let me finish. Let me finish. So instead of instead of you my, my, my own big brother that law instead of you saying this was wrong, okay, we should not do it this way. You say, but they, you say saying that because saying that you so saying that saying that the stand up for everything they put well, here. Yeah? I, 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 I say 1974. I'm gonna keep talking because I'm talk. You think everything that everything I don't talk on, I don't talk. Sami, uh, let me finish. Sami, I pick and choose well, what I talk about. Let me ask you a question now. Today, as a Minister, when are you finished? We have internet. This internet is very slow. Let me finish. I'm talking now. You are talking. I didn't stop you. I didn't stop you. I will choose. I will choose and pick. I will choose and pick. I will choose and pick what I respond to based upon my feeling at that time. What are my stomach for? My stomach not for that went in. But your responsibility as a minister, but very, very good friend, is to condemn what happened today. It does not put your government in a good light. Don't say because Joey Adam, Joey Adam kick out of office. Okay? So you want to do the same thing that Joey Adam did? Just say it was bad, and I will accept that. And what I have felt in particular time has no relevance to what we're talking about today. My, maybe my stomach was not full. Maybe I was hungry. So I didn't want to talk. So I want to talk now because I own spoon. So I want to ask you, you think what happened today was good, bad, and y'all will change it, or y'all will continue it? To go like this. That's my only question I got for you. So, 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 Bibera Jackson, you, 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 you instructing me that I should make a determination that what happened was wrong and therefore I should condemn it. Who made that determination? I speak for a government. I am not here to articulate my personal feelings and opinions. It is not a determination that what took place was wrong. You say, I'm going to say it wrong, I'm going to condemn it. Government assets are all over the place. You came a little bit late. I'm in a ministry. You, you're a big brother. You want me to succeed. I'm in a ministry that got just one car because all the cars are taken away. 
And in a ministry where I did not meet in a computer, I did not meet in a laptop, I did not even meet office chairs. I'm in a ministry that dilapidated as the rainy season is coming. If I don't take the whole roof down to change it, all the upstairs, because it's three stories, all the upstairs, nothing can happen there. That's the kind of situation we inherited. And, 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 and we have government officials who have work to do, they don't even have a car to drive. And honest efforts have been made to retrieve it. And you're talking about people acting that you're calling government official grown-up boss and all those kinds of things. When you were in government today, I have to show you respect. You can disagree with what it did, but you cannot be derogatory and demeaning to them to call them grown-up boss because you disagree with their approach. And you want me to join that and say I condemn them, the wrong. I said they were no, acting like grown-up. I said they were acting like grown-up. They were actually they grown-up people. They mean they are grown-up people. And, and, and I don't think... I don't think... I don't think... I don't think... I don't think a professional man like you from the London School of Economics should be calling government official grown-up people. That's unacceptable. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Mr. Minister. We're going to move on. Glennie, please ask your two questions. So, um, hello, Minister Pia. How are you? I'm doing good. I like your response to Samuel Jackson, because I think what happened today, if Patrick Sulu would have turned in the government vehicle, then he would not have been embarrassed today. It's just clear cut. It's a government car. He shouldn't still have it. He's no longer in the government. He should have turned it over. And so that would not have happened. And I also like the fact that you said that we can- Can we, we just check you? Let's check you. Glenn, allow us, you ask a question. Uh, and I think it will be fair. Uh, Patrick Sudo, uh, according to the document from GSA, he bought the vehicle. Okay, so I'm just so saying. It, so it would not be a government car where he have document that he bought. Okay, so if he, if, so that means that the people who stopped in today to get the car did not know about that. And that that's why we are here. And that's why we are here asking Gerald Let me appear the question. That's what, and so I can ask my question too. If I'm not informed about that, I can ask my question based on what how I understand it. So if I the just car was need, I, just to, I just need to correct you, that's all. Well, thank but you, you based on your information that you have. Thank you for the correction. But if I didn't know that, then I will share I will share that information. I thank you for putting that up. And I would hope that this information would have been shared with the asset recovery people. And if they had that, they would not have done that. But in suffice it to say, if government officials, and I can still make my point, if there are government officials who still have the government um cars. They should have turned it in by now. People shouldn't have to go after them to turn in those cars. And these things that and things that are the occurrence today would not have would not have to happen if the cars were turned over. Uh, um, so that's the point I wanted to make. Mr. Minister, I want to ask you, because we have a press secretary and we have you. I want to ask what is the difference between you and the press secretary? I understand what your difference is, but I want to specifically ask about. When pronouncements are made specifically to the presidents of Liberia as a release to, for example, um, an investigation is the president says there will be an investigation done. And and we don't come back and hear redress or whether that, that investigation hey, hey, Benny, I beg you to stop you. You have a question on the asset recovery. So on the asset recovery, we ask yeah, for this okay, I don't have no, I don't I don't have any other questions. So okay, we go to the next topic, then I will ask. I don't got to ask a recovery question. All right. Thank you, Glenny. Mommy, your question on asset recovery. Yeah, I wanted to clarify something on the scene asset recovery. And maybe the minister need to emphasize this as the message to go home. They are asking people to bring cars so they can verify and confirm that it was sold or bought the proper way. If it is confirmed that it was sold and bought the proper way, you go home with your car. If it is established that it was not bought or sold the proper way, the government will take ownership of the car. That is the process that is ongoing. So, Sam Jackson, do not just say people standing on the street is wrong. Thank you. And even the Deputy Director General emphasized that in his interview. But sometimes people listening and just decide to see what they want to see. He said it. He said, we'll take this car, we'll investigate the records, if it is established on the scene, he said it. He said, if it is established that Patrick bought the car in accordance with all the law, he will carry the car. He said, we'll do it with every other car that we suspect. That's why he said, the recording is there. If you can find a recording and play it, stand on spoon so people can listen, maybe that will help. 
So I just wanted to make that. I don't have question. The second comment I want to make. The policy is a bad policy. Yes, I know that the government made a decision in the past to implement it, but I think the information leading to the formulation of the policy was not fair. I can't phantom how an ordinary deputy minister is able to maintain the maintenance of a car at a high cost and government cannot maintain it. That's the first thing. A government cannot maintain the cost of repairing a car, but a deputy minister can buy that car and maintain it for five, six years and it running good. There is, there was a collusion, and that's why I want to make this recommendation to you, Minister. There was a collusion to present to the president at the time that it is so expensive to maintain government car because car maintenance services, procurement people and driver were into collusion to inflate the cost of maintaining car. And that's what led the president to instituting that policy decision. When you review it over, you will realize that the actual real cost of maintaining car is not as high as the one they presented to the president that misled her to have instituted this measure. So let's go back to that policy. Let's review that policy. It's wrong. It costing government a whole lot. Let's fix it. Yeah, so, I mean, good point, uh, Mame. You're a smart guy, always smart on the show. Uh, I, I don't disagree with you when you call for a revision of the policy. Government, the running of government is dynamic. It's not stagnant. Uh, policies are not just stuck there in stone and you can change them. I mean, you do evaluation, you do reassessment, and you can change from time to time. But at the same time, we got to just be practical. Mame, I have been back in Monrovia since the 21st of February. I lay brave. As he told me the other day, he lay brave. I don't know whether he was he was joking or he lay there. If I'm driving from Broad Street to go to Brave, the, the only good part of the road to pass is when I soon as I cross the the new bridge. And Paul has been there because he went Bapolu plenty of time to do a late campaign. The rest of the road until I reach to Brave is a disaster. But people who are driving government and other cars, they don't care. They just chunk it there. I don't the men went pay money to to maintain the car. Meanwhile, the other people in that same land who are using their own cars, knowing that they will bear the cost for maintaining the car, they move in the total. When they're passing by the whole they're taking their own time. So the way people can damage government property, the way we get so irresponsible managing government property, is that the same way people treat their own properties? So that concept of why would a man buy a car and he can keep it this long and then government can do it, it is because of our attitude. That's why I agree with Lauren Bopler when he always says, let's change our minds and attitude. We don't see public assets as things that we should protect. We carelessly handle them because that's not my money. Even when it's poor, that's not my money they're going to face to maintain it. And, and, and we've got to be careful how we get through corruption accusations uh, 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 towards people. The reason why maintaining vehicles are very expensive is not because people coll colluding necessarily. Maybe it can happen in some instances. But if you hire a garage and I go there to fix my car, I get cash to pay you, you get your money on the spot. Most of government services are like credit. You take car and Sami knows this. You go to the garage, government sends all their cars there. So now they may take three months or six months to get your money. That's business. The man who walks there and fixing a car, if he's going to spend $200 for a particular situation, when you carry the government car because you were paying after six months, you will multiply maybe that 200 times four. Because you're looking at how long it's going to take for him to get his money. And maybe because of corruption also, to get his own money, he got to be bribing somebody in the system to process a vulture and getting his money. So those are the factors. As a result of that, the cost for maintaining vehicles, my brother, I was there, was very high. Very high to the extent that you almost want to rebuy the car. So, like I said, there was wisdom. In my mind, you can disagree. There was wisdom when the government said, rather than spending money to maintain car at this level to the extent that you can even buy another new car, when the car depreciates, let's sell it. I think it was wise. Does it mean we can revisit it? We can revisit it because times have changed. Uh, thank you very much, Mame. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Let me bring in Isaac Doe, Paul Kennedy, and then we'll go to the next, um, the next conversation. As to do your two question, please. Yeah, thank you. How you doing, Minister? Uh, hi to everyone and those listening, our friends on the show. Minister, let me quickly start off by saying 
uh, it was interesting to hear you getting angry at uh, no, Mr. Sam Jack calling all your people good numbers. Let me just quickly say. Are you uh, anger? I told you are angry or are your perception? <laughs> all right, let me ask my question. So, uh, Sen Senator Dillon was right on the show. He referred to President Weir and his official as gang. They were Stay on the Weir the they as no, so <laughs> my brother, my, my, my brother, Mami referred to President Weir and his official as crazy people. Well, you had a right to get angry with them. You won't get angry with them. Have been Don't worry about that. So it, it's interesting. But, but let me go ahead. You said no, no, you will not go ahead. 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 You will not go we will give you the chance to speak, but allow us to ask the minister his question. We have a guest, please. I'm begging you. You will respond to us. He got to respond every time. He told the assurance. So then you just show him that he didn't go. So, minister. Ask the question, please. Somebody said, yeah, yeah, man. Let me, let me leave my business. Somebody said, you know, the people say the, the process we're doing is for you to bring a car, we take it, then we investigate. Minister, you were, yeah, sure you passed through K1. There has always been a law that says, uh, innocent until proven guilty is not changed. On, on the, is that you don't come and take people can't investigate? You investigate, you get probable cause, then you go and implement. That's how it works in K1. That's how it's like. So, there are documents before you come to this car, you will get documents, you will review it, you will see the issues, then you come. But let me ask you today, the, the boys were on the street taking yellow taxis, and one of the guys said the taxis were. Applying the street without proper documentation. Uh, is it the asset recovery place to look for cars with proper documents in the street? Is that one, one of you? You said a question to me? You said one yeah, boy yeah, is I'm, something how, how is that substantive to this conversation? I don't I don't respond to one thing one boss said in the street. So but the thing, <laughs> is, the thing is, let me say this to you, as a yeah, when you are trying to make an example, I thought you would have. I thought you would have specifically said, Pia, yesterday you said we are was crazy. Now you have a problem with somebody saying the other person are grown up. But why are you jumping to my and jumping to different different people? If I said it, <laughs> you're having problem no, with me. This is for for confronting me. That's one. Two. <laughs> disagreeing with Saint Justin does not mean I'm angry. But you hold okay. people by different standards. Sam. Okay is one of the elders of our land. Sam can be counted among the educated people in our country. Sam comes from the prestigious London School of Economics. He can find very refined way of disagreeing with people <laughs> or then calling them mm -hmm. That's my point, brother. Uh -huh. No issue. So yeah, so to my question, my first question I'll ask you, I saw the asset recovery team seizing cars, yellow taxi, one of the guys say belong to Fina Bono. The yellow taxes and thing and he said the reason why they were taking it because they were applying the street without proper documentation i'm asking you i have no, I have no evidence it? of that i didn't see it i have no evidence of that i cannot speak to something i did not see all right so the next question let's assume you didn't see it but in the event you get to know tomorrow that they took yellow taxi people cars and said the car he got document proper document for applying the street in case you see it tomorrow what would be your reaction Hypothetical, it hasn't happened and it doesn't worth an answer. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I was trying to unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you very loud and clear. Yes, good evening, everyone. My honorable man, uh, honorable Pia, good evening. Uh, good evening to my sister, Glenny. The woman, a better woman, she is not a buzzer. Don't can't confuse. Oh, yeah, Pia. The woman, yeah, ask your question. Woman, yeah. Ask your question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think the Honorable Pia will keep coming back here because he's the mouthpiece of the government. Uh, I definitely want to applaud the government for embarking upon a process to recover uh, our taxpayers' property. Uh, the question I want to ask the gentleman is, uh, I am assuming that government has a registry of 
all of its assets because if it bought them would definitely have a bill of sale in a term of property value what a house is it will have some legitimate registration of what it bought i mean freezing okay is it in liberia I think so. Okay, so I think I think yes. So uh, on, on Pierre, we gotta go to the next talking point. And just before you go to that talking point, just before you go to that talking point, you know I can enjoy my brother uh, as a do. <laughs> as a do say you might investigate, you find fact before you go for the car. But as a do, government told me say bring my, bring your car, want to verify. As a do, government put current money back down in the street and took his car and just say walk in your fence and go. As a doctor, thought it was okay. Now, as a doctor, say you're not supposed to do that until you investigate and you establish everything. But look, I said the thing is simple. In the first place, your government did not give us documentation that we can rely upon to say this is why it is. When you're operating in a vacuum out of the sky, then it's like you, you you're looking for your properties. You don't know how grave this situation is, as a you are good intention, man. Sometimes when you're talking, your teenager people getting vest with you. I don't think you have a bad intention. No, and I know no, sometimes no, you can be very reasonable. You have a country. You have a country. It may not be you. Maybe you didn't do anything. But you you will make a mistake when you begin to vote for a system because you are a part of that system. Because you are not. You were not John, and John was not you. You could live above the free and and, and, and operate with integrity. Somebody else was doing something wrong. Maybe you didn't take care. Does it mean other people didn't take care? And if we want to find those guys and we can't find any documentation to trace them, we we'll begin to target vehicles that we know bear semblance of government's identity. The only good part is, unlike your administration, that took those cars, and I always beg the example myself, where you saw my flag received, pay 3500 that are into the central bank account. Your verification should have confirmed what I pay for the car. I pay for the car. You took the car, you took the money. In this case, if it is determined that people follow the process, they follow the law, they bought their cars, the cars should be returned. And I think that should be the good news. That you should be more. Uh, Honorable Pierre, we're going to take one question yeah. from so, one of so, our listed so, up. We're going to take one. Hold on, I said back to you. We're going to bring in Abdullah Ketemba, yeah. who has yeah. only one question for you. Uh, then we'll move to our next talking point. We got to be very gracious with our time. It's like uh, almost six o'clock in Liberia, 10, um, 10 o'clock in Liberia, six o'clock here. We have to be gracious. Abdullah, your one question for Minister Pia. Sure. I have, I have, uh, first of all, thank you guys for allowing me to ask my question. I have two questions, but Stanton Bradley asked one question, so I will take the bride. Look, um, we the, the, the point is what happens today, I think everybody supports the asset recovery process. Good thing. But when that process does not do due diligence, it raises concern. If you're going to see someone's car, and there's a document that shows that person pay off the car by any arrangement, your first step is to do due diligence and find out what are lists of car people pay for or own before we expose them to public ridicule and degradation in disrespect. So I think my question is, is this not a wrong-headed approach? When you cause the damage and you tell the person to go repair the damage of public ridicule and public degradation, instead of you do your due diligence and say, let's look at the list of those who paid for, how do we handle these? That is my question to the minister. Is this not a wrong-headed approach? When you cause the public damage and public ridicule, and ask the person on whom the, the damage was inflicted to come and repair the damage you inflicted on them. Instead of doing due diligence and making sure what do we have, where do we proceed? In similar line, the second question is, don't you think it is important to let the public know that here are the steps in the asset recovery of these cars. Here's the public steps. It is clear to the public that these steps will be taken and anybody that will force outside is that if you have cars and you paid for to avoid being publicly embarrassed, let's yet have a procedure. But I think today was a complete flop of the asset recovery. Oh, guys that were trying to see sky is a complete public embarrassment. 
it shows a lack of incompetent lack of competence in the political trigger happy political impulse or unleashed so that's my question that is my that's i, I want you to respond to that the second question has to do what as do said and we kind of gloss over it but it is profound and I think the profanity should be lost on us. He said, is there part of the world of asset recovery to be checking documentation on the street? Because the asset recovery team is a bigger picture of making sure we, we pursue things in a more diligent, effective way. But are they on the street now checking documentation? If that is their job, that is the question. And I think that question was glossed over. The example may be unrelated, but the question is profound. And I think it should be answered. Those are my two questions. Thank you so much, Stanton. As always, we appreciate you. Go ahead, Mr. And Minister. I, and I thought, it was, I thought it was answered, Paul, and I'm not going to answer questions the way you want me to answer. It's so I, 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 it's as it do, as it do talking about as it do talking about somebody taking yellow. Tessie and, and, and that kind of street gossip, you want me to, to say what about it? I, th I thought I answered as I said that, that, that that's something that I'm knowledgeable about and I can speak Andrew, about can it. You please you say, the video? Can I say you guys give me 10. You guys give me 10. This is, this I, I is, this is wait, wait, let, let the minister finish answering. Yeah, this is, this is not correct. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, it was Ketama, not Paul, just to get the individual that was asking the question. Oh, it was like, Ketama who called? Yes. Oh, okay, but 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 Katama, I, I certainly cannot answer a question the way you want me to answer it. Uh, as a do, cannot take street gossip and make it an issue here. You expect me to be obliged to say something about something I did not see, something that I did not know about. That that, that that's not that's not that's not how it works. I mean, it works. So, just accept the fact that when you ask a question, you do not anticipate that a guest will answer according to what you want to hear. If, if that is the way, then there's no need for an interview. You may disagree with my answer, but you got to keep it to yourself. Because the thing is, I'm the only guest. All of you are panelists. Your duty is to ask questions and not to form another side of the argument and be arguing with your guests. You got to treat your guests with respect. Uh, you're not in your mind. They're not in your mind. They can't answer as you want it. The, the dialogue and discussion will be civil when you just take an answer for why it is and you leave the rest. All of you who are on set, and with me, who's the host? The main group of people who can assess what we all do here is that your audience. Stanton Show can take sometimes six, seven K people watching. Those are the people, the Liberian people, and others, maybe don't Liberians who are watching, who will make the determination as to whether a question was properly answered or not answered properly. It's not for you to constrain your guests to say, I think you breathed away, I think you didn't answer it. But it's his opinion, and I think I must respect. What he feels about the question, but he 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 just has to accept whatever the answer was that I gave because that's the answer I have for the question. Thank you very much, Jerry. Let me appear and thank you to Katema for calling in. We're going to move, guys. Again, like I said, it's ten o'clock in Liberia, six o'clock. We do agree. We got six. So you're, you're, you're taking you're taking calls now, Stanton. No, I had to bring in Katema. We have a special a special preference for Katema. Yes, yes. Can oh, okay. somebody back me to ask you questions oh, since okay. we heard that you since you heard that you are coming on and he begged me to ask questions. Oh, so okay. uh, let's go to the next talking point, uh, uh the honorable man Joe Limit Pierre. As everyone you know, right now within the studio where you got super TV, fabric, spoon, YouTube, Instagram, you have like Jerry Limit Pierre said over nine thousand people watching, not on the radio, just on social media. Again, if you look on Fabric, you will see Group, Super, Spoon, and YouTube. Everybody glue in to listen, please, to enjoy the program. Let's make our question very brief, short, and give the guest who is Jeremy Limit Pierre the chance to answer. If for any reason you think he's not answering your question, allow him to answer, and then we can have the discussion after he leaves. So, folks, I want to bring in the next talking point, and I'm going to start this talking point with my brother, Mr. Duadu. Then here comes our sister, uh, Glenny JJ, Mame will do the rotation like that. We're done with asset recovery. We're going to the army wives. Or maybe we can give Geraldine May Pierre the chance to allow us, maybe two minutes, Geraldine May, Minister Pierre. There was an investigation about this army wife thing, Minister. The president announced it, and Glenny was pushing this. She always pushes. 
that the president announcement should hold water. What happened with that report, the investigative report concerning the protest of the army wife, sir? So the, the effort to investigate was not just about the protest. Uh, remember when the wives of uh, members of the army who hold an entire country hostage for almost a whole day, it has a scope that is deeper. But in leadership, timeliness to addressing an issue is always key. And that is why, that's the reason why in my capacity as a minister of information, I always do my best to not keep people in the dark for a long time. So the president had to address the nation. And, and based on the available information at the time, the president constituted, I mean, he announced an investigation and gave a scope of how long the investigation would take. Uh, no sooner than later, we realized that the situations that we were, I mean, the situation that we were faced with was deeper than what we knew on the surface. It had implications beyond our borders. It had regional and international security implications. And, and we, we realized that what was required to be done was deep. And then some of our partners that took interest and they, they, they begin to give pieces of that. I don't want to go deeper into it because it's a security issue. So we've not been able to make that too in their, their land because the scope of what we face was deeper than what we thought it was. Uh, I would agree with anybody who would think that then there should have been continuous update, right? But but again, this was a presidential action and they, it goes back to the question that Jen uh, Plenty asked earlier. So from time in time, you know, the press secretary will want to be updating on matters that concern the president. It does not stop the Minister of Information because you are the overall chief communicator of the government. So there's nothing that restricts you to say you can talk presidential matter. And I will, I will be the first to admit that then we needed to keep updating the public as to where we were with this situation. Be as it may, it did not happen. We, I mean, we got to be honest. I've always told you guys that as a Minister of Information, I would try to approach all these communication issues with the utmost degree of honesty. And I will always do that. Those who have genuine concern as to why it appears the public has been kept in the dark when they were told that an investigative, an investigative report would have been available in two weeks, they, they are right. They have a very genuine cause. All I'm adding and saying to them is that what we found out to be the scope of what we thought we were investigating is deeper than what you imagine. And that has led to uh, a point where it requires a lot of time. But shouldn't we have briefed or updated the public? I think we should have. And, and what I want to say now is we get in there. We the, the reason why we haven't come back also also to say, oh, okay, we'll do it in three weeks from now is that we want to be credible. If we give you another time and in the end it does not happen, then you say, okay, we don't have to listen to it anymore. They said the first time it didn't happen, they came the second time it didn't happen. So we get in there and 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 I'm not sure we we're very far from reaching a conclusion, but just know this the scope and dimension of what we thought we were dealing with is deeper than what we thought we knew. So that's why it has taken this long. And the security matter. But meanwhile, it, it will be it will interest you to know that while the investigative report is still ongoing, some of the concerns raised by the women have been solved. Don't forget, the first demand was no compromise until the defense minister goes. That was addressed. They said they live in the darkness, in their barracks. In humane conditions, the barracks has electricity. The school, the hospital, in all those situations that they brought for some of them, it's not been broadcast, but it's been addressed. And I guess that's part of the reason why you don't see continuous agitation. Now, what the report was meant to, to help us to do is to give a clear picture as to why what happened happened. Because you have to mitigate it because that security situation so that it does not get repeated. And we'll get there. But the good news is some of those very conditions for which the action took place have been resolved as we still await the conclusion of the investigative process. Okay, so let me ask you, please allow us to ask you and be fair on the show. Were there two groups that were carrying on investigation, the Senate and the executive? So when the, when, the, when, the, when the executive announces an action, it does not stop anyone who is interested from doing it. The Senate is, is a legislative arm of the, of the government, right? So if in addition to what the president has ordered, uh, 
they took a decision to do something on their own, nothing stops them from not doing so. But what I'm speaking to is the one that was announced by the executive led by President Buaka. So again, can you just answer my question? Uh, we receiving report of the investigation, Mr. Minister. Which report are we, should the Labyrinth people expect? The one that yes, was announced by President Buaka. The one that was announced by President Buaka. That's, that's the one I'm speaking to. Okay, so the executive have their own report that we all should wait for, correct? I know of an investigative process announced by the executive. I'm not aware of the separate executive, I mean, investigative action announced by the legislature. And I don't, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pretend to know what they're doing and speak to anyone I don't know exactly. I, I'm, I'm speaking to the one that the president who appointed me and the president in whose government I'm a member of the cabinet announced. That's what I'm talking about. So again, thank you very much for being very fair. We have the report uh, that was submitted uh, to the Senate. Uh, we have the investigative report. This report was signed. Uh, it was signed by, let me put those that signed this report up. As you can see, Senator Augustine Chi, uh, Senator Momo Cyrus, the chair on security, uh, Senator uh, Doe Brown, uh, Senator A. Darius DeLong. And also, as you can see, my question came into being because we are receiving information, correct me, maybe it's a mistake, that you have only one team doing investigation. And it was headed by members of the Senate, as you can see. Now, when you answer that part of my question, like you did almost, the recommendation here, I'm sharing this information, uh, these are document the final report within the Senate, the recommendation here, and you telling us that some of their concerns were met, one of which is to remove the then appointed and confirmed defense minister. Mr. Minister, Chair Lemme Pierre, are these recommendation, would this recommendation be followed by the executive? Have you seen this document from the Senate? because they are the same recommendation, they are the same complaint that was posed prior to with the protest. Can you speak to it, sir? To the best of my knowledge, the investigation announced by President Buakat, a report regarding that investigation is yet to come out. And I've just told you that because of the scope of the investigation, we've not concluded. What you've just displayed on your screen got no bearing of any member of the executive, the individuals who signed that you're referencing are all senators. I have not been privileged to that report. I cannot comment on a report that I have not been privileged to. I have not read it. I don't know why it contains. I cannot begin to respond to it because I see it on your screen. Absolutely not. Are you telling librarians tonight that the president have not received a report from the investigation? The report, the investigation that was announced by the president, I don't know yes. of a report. Have he received the report within the two weeks deadline? Come again? Have he received the report within the not two to weeks of the deadline? Not to my knowledge. So the president made or gave a proclamation that in two weeks there will be an investigation and report will be delivered. And you I just, explain, I just explained to you why it has not happened. I thought we went through that. No, no, sir. Again, uh, let me ask the question and you answer. As you all know, this is how we do it. The president of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Jose Yuma Barca, pronounced on the 12th of uh, of February, that there will be an investigation, two weeks. They have passed the two weeks, passed a month, and continue to count. Are you saying they have never ever submitted a report? Who in charge of the investigation? Why have they not submitted a report since the president put an end date to his proclamation, to his announcement? It was, in, it was intentional not to announce who's in charge of the investigator, because don't forget there's a security matter. In the wisdom of, of, of the government, based on advice, it, it, it wasn't proper to say Stanton, PR, Ava, Tuba, those are the people on the committee doing the investigation. So what the president committed to you was that this matter was being investigated, right? And I took my time to explain that we realized that the scope of the investigation is deeper and it goes beyond the borders of Liberia. It has regional dimensions. It has deeper international dimensions. And so, Due care has been taken. Uh, without saying to you that it will be tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I'm saying subsequently and eventually, 
those investigations will conclude, the president will receive a report. But what you just placed on your screen, as you saw from the signatory, is an initiative of the Senate, and nothing stops them from doing an investigation, even if the president has announced one. Uh, but then again, I haven't seen what you just placed there. I'm not privileged to the content, and I'm not going to attempt to, to, to respond to the content. Please, on, please on, because you're the information minister, you represent the government. Do not. But I will yes. still forward them to you. I have all the documents. I will forward them to you. It. I will and, appreciate and, it. And, and you can review it. I think there will be I speaking as the network that we receive information. I think those are the same documents uh, that were submitted to President Jose Yimabwaka, but you're the spokesman of the government. So we'll take your word for it. I'm going to forward it to you. Let me bring in Mr. Dualu. If you don't have any question on this investigation, then we'll move to the next one real quick. Mr. Dualu, Sis Glendy, Mame, and we'll do the rest of the team. Yeah, I'll just ask one question. But before, Senator, can you please mute? Before I ask that question, I'm going to say this, guys. Um, let's start worrying about somebody getting shamed because government arrests them. The only worry that I do have that the government stays within the confines of the law. Personally, I want them to be disgraced like they do it anywhere else in the world. You are your wedding. If you commit a crime, the government can arrest you at your wedding while you're standing at the pulpit. That's what I want to see in Liberia. Don't worry about disgracing somebody. They should be disgraced because they're disgracing the Liberian people. Honorable Pia, what do you say to some of these army wives? They say every day the government doing investigation. The investigation can finish. We are sick and tired of investigation. When will investigations in Liberia year result? How do you respond to them, sir? We are not hearing you, sir. Nelson? And um, maybe he you okay? You do now. Yeah, you good. Go ahead. The, the army wives had concerns. Uh, the army wives did not call for an investigation. The army wives said, we want X, Y, Z. Some of the X, Y, Z that they wanted are being undertaken. The government calls for an investigation, calls for an investigation because they wanted to look deeper into what happened. It was for the purpose of the government's own information. Because whatever they would have gotten from those investigations, we help us in a long way, maybe mitigating the reoccurrence of those situations. But what was of concern to those women were the conditions they laid down. And thanks to a heroism, the chief, the, the, the Minister of National Defense, with what Dura said, this is one of their demands. I'm not going to stand in the way of peace. I walk away. Problem number one was solved. No electricity to the barrack. The president instructs LEC. You cannot treat the army people that stay. They can live in the darkness. Give them electricity. The school, they say we got a problem with the school, we got a problem with this. Those matters are being resolved. I, I, I believe those are the things of interest to those women. And all of us, you know, we, we should not, we should not, we should be careful how we dig deeper into something we all saw holding our country hostage for some hours. Let 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 let, let give this process some time, right? I have said to you. That the dimension of what we wanted to investigate is deeper than what we saw. You know, it, it goes beyond our borders. Uh, we conclude it, right? But even as we conclude it, most of the fundings that we have is not what we're waiting for to solve the problems that the women brought for. Most of the fundings will be to mitigate the reoccurrence of what happened. And I think that's what is key. But I think the army wives. They got some, they asked and the president, if you listen to the last time we did our our commissioning, if you listen to the president remark, he was still annoyed. He said, Look at the AFL, look at where they live. You want these people to fight for you when there's trouble. You want them to protect you, but you treat them like animals. Just week, I mean, days ago, when we commissioned a large batch of cabinet officials, those were his remarks. He's not playing politics with the army. He genuinely believed that some of the concerns that were raised are serious. And that if the government cares, we should address them, and he's addressing them. Oh, thank as you very much. As, as, are, as important as the report will be, solving some of the problems the people got is not hinged on when the report is available. Minister Pia, you. Minister Pia, I think you, um, the question I wanted to ask, I think you've all, all already answered, but I want to make a Comment since my question was almost partly answered. 
I think going back um, from here today and going forward, it will be good if you and the press secretary will also remember to do follow up on these things that they tell us. Like if uh, I, I remember um, Senator Pro Tem Yombli Kanga was the one that also said that they, the Senate will also do the, 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 the investigation. So for the president to announce prior to the pro tem and the president's report is still not ready, I think that's that's just not satisfactory to me. And I will hope that when you all tell us something, when you come back the next week with press conference, touch on it so that they so that the populace is informed on it. But I don't have any. I think my question was answered. So on so, so let me let me tell you this little secret, and and, and I call it a secret. You see, when you are minister of information, you speak for the government but you don't speak based on your own information, your impulse, or when you feel like. So say, for example, something happened in Singe, right? Or Kinjo, let me not say Singe. For the Minister of Information to speak on what exactly happened in, in Kinjo, you have to talk maybe to the police director, since police forces were involved. You have to speak to the justice minister. So his coming back to the public is dependent on received of the available information if an investigative report is going on right and i went to the president for example say within the public needs update I say okay we still have some ways to go so let, let, let me feel small i cannot in good conscience say because i'm the press secretary or i'm the information minister will come and say something about it when i have not received what i should say so that's how it works and especially with regards to these kinds of matters that are security, when they tell you, say, wait, you cannot formulate your own response. You cannot put yourself and say, no, I just got to say something to the public. Because you, you, we, 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 are, we are like a cleaning house, right? All the things you can talk about on the show, what are you about no car, what are you about this? I will not be there that I'm doing it, right? But I speak for the government and therefore I got to speak to them. But how do I speak to them? I got to be briefed. And when I'm briefed, I gotta be critical. I'm not, I'm not just taking anything from them because you brief me. I just say, go oh, see that what happened. And I say yes. I will ask the hard questions behind the scene, and I gotta be convinced about what you've told me that I'm supposed to come and say before I have that confidence to come and say it. So it's a kind of process that you know you bring the communication man. Oh, you're not timely. You're not briefing too much. But as they do, as they do, knows they want because you are in government. We say things when we are told. And something is a veteran being around for long. He knows this one. He knows that as information minister. I will not just jump and say I'm talking on Sony, even if I'm not being brief, because I want to keep the public abreast. My desire to keep the public abreast should be based on truth telling. Because I have a credibility that I want to stand. I don't want to be that information minister that when I come to talk, don't mind PR man, don't lie. Every time, always time to listen to that man. I want people to trust me. And their trust in me, by extension, would be trust in their government. And so it got to be done scrupulously and meticulously. Thank you very much, Minister Pierre. Uh, Mame? Yeah, I would say something on that, but to, to just clarify something that Asik said. <clears throat> Asik, if I said to you, love your wife or your girlfriend without beating on her on the street, I'm not saying you beat your girlfriend on the street. I'm only telling you you can love your wife or your girlfriend without beating up on the street. I said the rescue mission should rescue without excuse. People who want criticized should criticize without craziness. I did not see anybody were crazy. So I wanted to make that clarification. That said, I will conclude because I was supposed to just sorry for the you know exit. Minister Pia, I want people listening to us, you as the minister. We need to review the policy. You already said that there's a need. One critical part of the policy that needs to be reviewed is the option in the policy for the person who owning the car to be the first choice to buy the car. That is where the issue is. The policy allows the person owning the car to be having the first preference to buy the car. If government wants to auction vehicles, let it make a public option. Let people go and compete to be able to buy so government get its fair share. If you make me the first option, the first preference, I can collude and take parts from the car, only to buy it and pull it back. So let's review the policy. 
the costing government a whole lot. And I do not disagree. Eh? I do not disagree. So, so no yeah. need for energy and time only. I do not yeah. disagree. Like I said, the running of government is a dynamic process. Yeah, I'm one my we, we initiate, on we initiate things and believing that they will work. Yeah. If our evaluation of the process suggests that they're not working from time to time, we should be willing to make adjustment to make changes. Yeah, okay. I want to, uh, I want to waste my I want to put my energy and my time on it because I see it's very important and I want more emphasis on it. The emphasis correct. is we should review the policy and part of the review process should ensure that the person riding the car doesn't have first preference of buying the car, they should pull it off for public option so government can get fair value for the assets they're giving off. Thank you, Stanton. Which means which means mean you which means you still believe the policy is good. Your only concern is that the person using the car should not be the first person. Is that it? No, I'm saying the policy, the policy on the car is wrong. In when you okay. review the policy, okay. one option, one option, one component of the policy is where to give or asset. Obviously, the government will sell assets. I'm saying in the process where government is selling assets, the person using the asset doesn't have or should not have the first preference to buy any asset. I do not disagree. I do not disagree. Um, Mame, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. As always, it's Ambola Mame. We want to say thanks for participating. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, we got Paul Kennedy. He's back. As if I can you ask your question? Yes. Um, you know, somebody had mentioned in terms of I think it was Paul that with all these citizens going, you'll be coming here back and forth. But how do we ensure to a large extent that it's not lip service you are giving us? Because you you know you comfortable responding to these questions and your responses are in line to a large extent with what's supposed to happen. Uh, what control do we have, or what can we do in the event? that your disposition or your receptiveness to these ideas and these suggestions are not what the larger part of this administration wants to look at. Um, how do we look at stuff like this? So from that perspective, I want us to like look at timelines in terms of expectations, um, you know, people who own those specific things, you know, like this whole policy right now, who can you tell us would be the primary responsible government official to look at it or whether it gotta be something different. You know, just that level of transparency and responsibility, how can we get that from you? So, and, and, and as I'm on this show, I'm no, I know a lot of people in government do listen, including my cabinet colleagues. And, and, and that's one thing that I've said consistently, and they all know that. I've always said, if we don't do wrong things, there will not be noise behind us. That's the best PR. It's not about having an information minister who talks plenty or press secretary who talks plenty. Because when the wrong things are being done, no matter your capacity to talk, it doesn't change the fact that wrong things are happening. So I've always said to people, the red PR for any government, for any administration, is to do the right thing. There will be people who want to be politicking, right? So they will always look for things to do politicking. But the broader segment of our people will see and know that their government is doing the right thing. And once you're doing the right thing, it's a PR all by itself. I don't have to come stretching my vein, explaining something to anybody. I've said that consistently. And from all indications, I have the president's support. Because when I say these things, he say, the minister is right. The minister is right. We human beings, I look forward to a time when we could just do everything without any problem. I don't know whether we can reach there. Maybe impossible because even the greatest countries on earth, you go to the European belt, you come to America where many of you are. There's problem. In some cases, we're even better in some cases than, 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 than things we see in other places because we've seen some very scary things in some of the greatest countries we know around here. So relatively, we're still doing good, but you're right, Aze. You can be the minister of information. You want to be sincere with the way you address things, but you're in a system, for example, that is not allowing you to do what you're supposed to do because every day you got to be confronted with trying to fix something. But I see the political way on the part of the president. And, and he keeps saying to people, just three days ago, we were sitting down in his office and he said, 
you know, they, they, their job, based on the way the job has been going, everybody wants, everybody wants to do. But I can just tell you one thing, two things. So you got to perform, and you don't have to be corrupt. I don't know two things can kick you out of government. He said that in the midst of a couple of other officials that were there. His intentions are good. And I think generally most of our officials are also thinking positively. And, and, and we just have to, you know, it's from the beginning, man, things are always like that, right? No matter how suppressed the whole structure looks. But I think a lot of good things are, are happening. As it, uh, and I gave the example to somebody the other day. I served in the Ellen administration. In one instance, I served for three years before I could even be commissioned. In less than two months, or a little over two months, almost the entire cabinet of Joseph Walker is commissioned. Some officials of the different public corporation autonomous agencies, some did not receive commission until the, the, the government time ended. I talked to my brother, Eugene Fagone, the other day. He said, the three years he stayed in government, you were not commissioned until he left. As he still says here, I don't know whether he got commission. Mm -hmm. So a lot is happening. Plenty of things happening at the same time. But if you look at it from a very serious, analytical, and critical point, I think Joseph Walker is doing great. Because don't forget, what we have here is like a jar of rest. And Glenda will know more about the NTG Mama. When you come in general rest, Anton, you put searches. A Muslim put in the hall, you put people. You put chicken. You don't put, you don't put searches. You don't put searches. Don't do okay, that. Okay, I'm not general rest. I can put searches. Yeah. That, that, so that, that kind of mixture, that kind of mixture is difficult to manage. And that's what we have during this period. Yeah, you go call JBC, you call it. You call, you call, you call, you call, you call JBC, you call it general rest. That JBC, you call it. That general rest. Yeah, my man, I, 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 heard, I heard that you and Costa can cook very well. I can't compete with it, but I can cook my own the general rest. So that's what I'm saying. But the point I'm making is that you got all kinds of combination, right? And that, that's the political arrangement we have here. And this one that Samuel Jackson, one of his strengths, he knows that. When you have the kind of conglomeration we had to remove the past regime, the different intricacies, Stanton, the different interests you have to satisfy, the efforts you have to make to hold what is supposed to be your coalition together. When people are feeling neglected, some feeling abandoned, there are people who believe they were mujahideens of the struggle. And they feel along the way that backs have been turned on them. Everybody's trumbling. People have different political thinking. Let's speak to that. So, so, so hold on, Minister. Minister, you bringing these things up. We're just going to just, because it's 6.31, I'm watching the time very closely, which will be 10.31 in Liberia. Uh, we're just going to just discuss any one of these things according to the God's will. Uh, not to restrain or any more, we have but the knockout, the, I will leave the American post, which is very good, but we can discuss it. Uh, let, let's just bring in the disenchanted folks right now, their feelings. Let's talk about knockout. Before we bring in Sam Jackson, as the dog, Paul Kennedy, uh, Jamama would have called him. Tell us what you want us to know about Nokal. You brought the conversation up. And the last conversation tonight would be also the issue concerning the 4,500 from Sylvester Grisby to the lawmakers, CDC, and also the 117,000 United States dollars letter written from Sylvester Grisby to NASCA. So it's all yours, Geraldine McPier, Information Minister, and then we'll just bombard you from any which way. We are not hearing you, sir. Come again? No, it's all yours now. The knockout issue. Oh, yes. The okay. 4, okay. The 4,000 oh, yeah, yeah. and yeah. the that of the 117,000 from. Uh, from Sylvester Grispe to NASCA concerning those five vehicles. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have interest in the local issue because for us, when these things are happening, they're not about the individual who's occupying the post at NOCA. The effect of the things that are said about these entities and stand to the government at large. By extension, the president, he's managing the country. He's the chief administrator of the, com of the country. And we're following all these conversations. Okay, you have an officer in charge. Some people say the man is there for only two months. He has spent 600000 He's investing in no car funds. He's stealing the money at no car. 
and we sit down, we listen, we watch these things, and we we sit down, we ask ourselves, but where 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 are these coming from? Can we have some pieces of evidence that suggest that someone has spent six hundred thousand? But not just that. It's not just a question of whether somebody spent six hundred or five hundred thousand. What are they saying the money was spent on? If it were ever spent. Are there supposed to be legitimate transactions that should not take place? So all these questions will come to mind. But the first thing to be established is that it's totally untrue that the officer in charge and his team has spent in the 600000 for the short term they've been in power. That's not true. So let me just give you some background. Nokai used to be a viable entity in the past. All exploration was taking place. People were paying money to, to, to the country based on the work that Noka was doing and what they wanted to do, the prospects they were looking for. Those things, those times have changed. Noka is not making money like that. But Noka, one of the past administration took some very strategic decisions. One, Noka decided that they will have their own office building. They place the rent in the Marban Point, they pay 150000 per annum in that building. Just two flows. If you ask me, having gone there several times, it's not a wise use of taxpayers' dollars. Uh, the Safwa Gray administration believed that they could solve that problem. They wanted their own headquarters. They went somewhere right beyond City Hall, they went to got a land and decided to build their own headquarters. Right? Uh, that headquarter, when they did the first, the first projection for the headquarters, and that first projection was done on July 13, 2023, the cost of the project was 2.9 million. That's what they projected. Then it will surprise you to know that on November 23rd, 2023, that was after the elections. That was when someone has won the election. They went back and amended that agreement and opted it by an additional 1.5 million. So a project that was projected initially for 2.9 million went to 4.5 million to build the, the headquarters. The, 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 the group hired to do that construction is BMC, which you all been talking about. Then they went and hired a consultant firm, TSC Global Consultant. They are the ones who are supposed to be monitoring the work that BMC was doing to make sure that everything they agree on is what they're doing. They receive nine nine k per month for their consultancy. All these situations were going on. Noka made the first payment against that in the tune of one point four million. Right, the Jacob Akori administration went in because of the time in between it. 100,000 of the, the money, the, because it got stipulated time. This guy who's doing the work by assessment has done 85% of the job. You owe him 800,000. You have not paid. The guy wants 800,000. No payment has been made. The interim chair or the officer in charge makes a PowerPoint presentation to the new board and says, look, we're owing these people 800,000. The work is going on. They've gone 85% of the work. We're breaching the contract. Can we find a way if we don't have the whole 800,000 to pay them 400,000? That was a proposal for him. That proposal was not taken, has not been taken, no money has been paid. <clears throat> so, where the question about 600,000 uh, uh, being spent in two months coming from? It was interesting to know that even at the point of, the, uh, of, of, of departure, the team that was there when they were leaving, of course, you heard that they had to pay severance unto themselves, right? The CEO in severance received 172,846. The finance man who was a deputy, 139,771 plus. The board chair, 66,150. The two other members on the board, 56,700 uh, 56, each. Look at this expenditure and, and, and see what happened. In a company that is not generating resources, you have a genuine contract. Meanwhile, 
They were interested to know that when Lukar had challenges and they had to take some austerity measure affecting the, the salaries of individuals who work with Lukar, they found a way to bring in something they call educational benefit. It was meant to supplement whatever these people were receiving so that they can be able to send their children to school. The last five years, the supplementary benefit were not paid. It accommodated to 132,000 in debt to these individuals. When the JET interim administration took over, the people working to the place came crying that we're supposed to be getting educational benefit. We are not gotten it in five years. The JET administration paid them only 9,000. When he met the board recently, he made a request to pay an additional 9,000 that would make it 18 because it, paid, it was for a quarter. That has not been sanctioned. So, where this whole question came up from that this man has spent 600000 and you have to pay this money because once you pay the money, you get kicked back. We want to see the documentation. We want to see a check of that payment. Or we want to even see documentation that the check was even issued, even if it were not in cash and brought back. We, we, in our country, you see, we may, not, we may let people, we may not let people. But when we begin to make accusations against them, it should be funded. It should be based on facts. It should not be to tarnish people's image and reputation. And that's exactly what we see happening to the Jake Kabakoli administration. And I'm not speaking to defend Jake Kabakoli. We've had the conversation. We've had the discussion. We've seen pieces of documents. We've seen evidences to that effect. But yet someone says, this man has spent this money. Meanwhile, nobody is talking about the fact that all these amounts are just made to you. In a non-performing entity, people pay these services to them, to themselves. But 132,000 that is collected on the entire staff could not be paid. But one person can take 172,000, another take 139,000, another take 66,000. But all the staff combined their educational benefit amount to get 132,000 is not prioritized. So. Yes, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. All these wild cat accusations about six hundred thousand being spent by Jacob Akoli at Noka are unfounded. If they are not propaganda, I don't know why it is. Let, let me come to that one quick. Then we move uh, because you talk about. He said Senator Connor posted something about. You want to leave that one? And I hear you. Least of us, okay, it's a whole oh, okay. Right there. Okay, okay. Let, let, that's let, all right. I, I like how you had the time to talk about this local issue. Uh, let me give chance to the rest of the guys that have not asked the question yet, but then we will close up with local. Any of you have questions with the exception of uh, Glenny and myself and I say uh Mr. Jackson, Paul Kennedy, and Andrew Mama. Mr. Jackson, you yeah. go first. One, yeah, one question. It was my, it's my Let's time, so... Yeah, great. Yeah, Mr. Jackson, first, we'll go. yeah thanks. We'll go, first of all, Joe, let me thanks a lot. Yeah, no, let me just be very clear here. I did not call anybody grown I said the actions were grown up. And I'm speaking to somebody who was on the class reloaded, who called our government thuggish, our government murderers, they call our government a kleptocracy. And that person, as close as I am to him, and I love him so much does not have the moral right to come here and respond to what I said, the action today were grown up. That's what I said. I didn't say they were grown up people. But I'm glad that you talk about locale because your government, the Unity Party government, cannibalized locale to the tune of $50 million. $50 million was stolen by people within the Unity Party government. Okay, that pill in comparison to the two or three million dollars that you are accusing people. But you have not spoken about the cannibalization of NOCAL under Robert Salif. And you know that, Jeremy Pierre. Okay? So you said, why I didn't say something about when they jack your car for you? But well, Uncle Sam, but the question with me, why we here? Did, did, did James Crown or six hundred thousand dollars? That's the question. Sam Jackson, did Jake Crown or six hundred thousand dollars? But no, well, let's, I will we'll talk about. about I will talk about that. Now. Let's talk about the present. Listen to me. 
I will answer it and say it the way I want to say it, Stanton. This is the way I want to say it. I'm taking my time. I'm reclaiming my time. I'm asking, did, did, did Jay see 600, 600 and Did he see 600 and uh, 600 I will not speak to that thousand because thousand. I don't have the evidence. Okay. All I right. don't have any evidence. Jake is a very close friend of mine. And whatever uh, Mr. Minister Pia said, I would take that as value. Uh, I know Jake to be a good person. I don't think he's going to go and steal 600000 and do the thing. But I don't have the evidence, okay? But I want the minister to react to what I said. Yeah, I come in react. Well, don't worry. I come in react. I come in react. Thank you. Thank you. I want him to speak to the fact that the class reloaded. Call my, call my government thuggish, roguish, murderous. And I did not call your government Grona. I said the action today were Grona like. I want you to respond to that. Okay, thank, 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 thank you, people are saying. I'm glad you called it your government. Your government is aware, according to you, that Robert Salib and other other squandered money from the car. Are you saying to me you have six years with the confidence you're speaking that is squandered money and you did not bring Robert Salib to justice? What 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 is happening here, Sam? Robert Salim and other broke down the car. According to you, you have six years. You refuse to prosecute them. But the last time I checked also, you must say everybody were in opposition four years into the are government. Maybe closer to the second year before you join it. They begin your government. People, they begin your government. If Robert Salim and others did something wrong, you had the space, you had the time, you had the authority to hold them accountable. You chose not to. The Boaga government will not follow your first step. When we believe that people transgressed, when we believe that people violated the public trust, and we have the evidences, we will hold them accountable. That's the difference. It's sad that you knew people stole money. It's sad that you knew people broke down no car, and you allowed them six years to walk free, and you come, you say, I didn't condemn it. If you, did, if you could not even take the step to go prosecute it, it means you did not have any facts. If you had... And those are persecutorial facts. What's uh, uh, you? Lima, you went, John Lima, you went too high on the puppy. We have to give him a chance to no, I, I, I'm not going to be bored. Don't, don't no, put me in trouble. You can't do it like that. 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 You will not on do No, you can't do it like that. I'm a big boy. John Lima, answer the question. Hold on, Charlie. Charlie, hold on. Hold on, Charlie, hold on. Uh, again, again, I'm not coming in defense of Samuel Jackson, but you cannot go so hard on him and now he jittering. You have to calm down. We are not in a place of people. You cannot do that, Charlie. I mean, he's jittering right now. Don't do this. All right, let me bring in Paul Kennedy. Paul, your question. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, but Minister, let me ask my question quick before the internet go up. Can you all hear me? Yes, you're good. You're good. We can hear you. Yeah, okay. That's good. Thank you. I don't know who's in my computer trying to turn my internet off, but I, I hope to learn this question. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that the minister brought to light the issue of the army wives. Uh, and some of the challenges we've seen in the country is uh, we keep facing solving the same problems from the top and not from the root. Uh, my question to the minister on the issue of the army wives and the army instead. We, we, and maybe this is a defense issue where we're not, we're not gonna talk it in detail. The military is paid very low uh, on a low scale. Uh, some of the hard, harsh uh, living condition we saw, uh, come, uh, you know, the take home incentive. If they will pay where, I don't think they were going to be looking up to government uh, from our perspective to come to address some of the issues. Uh, we just saw the national budget. What is this government doing to make sure that the military is living well, is paid well, is getting some additional uh, compensation, uh, life insurance, health insurance, and whatsoever to make sure that when they are in service of country, they have nothing to think about but purely service of country. That's my first question. Uh, second question I started asking before the internet interrupted. I'm not sure whether, you know, the conversation was continued. Is 
one of the asset recovery team has enumerated and come up with a list, a comprehensive list of all of the government assets to understand which is currently at hand is missing before trying to pursue it. I think the law uh, of, of recovering the asset is a very good thing. I mean, this is, you know, I'm happy to see that our government issued our government vehicles, people who took government money and built houses, and people who have money in their accounts on in country and offshore. I hope the uh, unity party government will be going after those people. But let's first of all start with in country. Do you now, as a team, have a list of a comprehensive asset that you are looking at to go after, uh, to be able to recover, to bring back some of these things to our country so that we benefit from it? Thank you. Talks I can hear you. The, 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 maybe they're you, I don't know. But I'm saying, are you hearing me? So I'm saying, as a government, we set a, an entire team to handle this process, right? Headed by Councillor Martin and his people. I may not have all the specifics about their work, right? I spoke in general school about what I know they should be doing. But those specifics, maybe Stanton can bring, you know, the asset recovery thing is, is it's a big, it's a big story, it's a big news. We should not run away from the media. You're your your how much they may you keep bringing in if you have doubt. Keep having a conversation because they gotta update you continuously on what they're doing now that their work has started. Bring them, don't throw, don't throw their issue on the Minister of Information because he's a Minister of Information. Let Martin keep coming. Let some of the people on your team keep coming. You know, ask them the hard question. Let them update you. Let them tell you what they're doing. And they haven't briefed me to say, oh, we have a comprehensive listing. We have this. But I'm sure if you got to them, they will have something to say to you. And, and, and we don't have any doubt that they will do the right thing. And, and, and those who believe they are genuinely innocent, you have nothing to fear. Because if you want to even accuse people falsely, you're going to find it difficult to prove anything in the court of law. So why are we afraid? Ah, thank you very much, Jeremy Pierre. Uh, again, he's, I must give it to him. Councillor Mountain is in touch with the media. His team, they are in touch with the media 24-7. Uh, they will make themselves available, if not this week, early part of next week, to update the nation through this means. I should say this, he was trying to be here on Friday, this coming Friday, but they have so many operations going on. They cannot announce that operation because this is what happened today. Once it was announced, when Patrick Sudo video came into question, people are shifting their cars and moving things from one point to another. So we cannot, we cannot come up right now to say where your next operation would be the next operation will be a covert operation till it is announced, and then Spoon or the rest of the media institution will bring it up. So, Gerald Limick, you are quite correct, but I must applaud Councillor Mountain. He's willing to speak on this issue in a second, and we should do Thank that. You. Yeah, as it go, your question. Well, my second question was not touched. Uh, you know, oh, go ahead, Paul. Uh, what was your second there. question? The, the second question, Honorable um, Minister, was the uh, you know where the government is trying to prioritize uh, the welfare of the army people, the military people. Uh, as far as we look at their budget, um, you know, uh, and we're talking about salary increment, and if it is necessary to do compensation for um, you know health benefit, health insurance, and other things. So that their conditions cannot be cannot continue to be deployable, as for which reasons their wives are, are on on protest and strikes, and strike actions. So, what is the government priority when addressing the military concern? So, so the president has been consistently on on on, on record for saying, admitting that the conditions of the army is bad. When a leader opens it, openly says one thing over and over like that. It means they know what the issues are and they have the desire to resolve those issues. I may not be able to speak to the specifics because I have not done a personal analysis of the Ministry of Defense budget. But I am told that the budget will seek to address some of the constraints they've been faced with. Let me tell you one concept that is flowing around and I know it's going to be prioritized. The places those people live that you call homes 
the president believes that's not those places are not habitable. Don't be surprised when in the not too distant future you see all leveling those buildings and putting up something that is, a, is representative of the people who, who are serving us. Those of you who people, those of you who are traveling in the West, you know how all the army people are treated in the West. When they when they retire, you call them veterans. You got a special hospital for them. You call them veteran hospital. I was there in America. You go to places, they are prioritized. You want to enter even airplane, they will say veterans first and all these kinds of stuff. You know, these are people responsible for our safety. The president continues to say that. And I, and I said the last time the president had to make a reference to them was at the last commissioning. And he was clear. They want people to protect or you're treating the animal they're not human beings. So those consistency in talking about the issue over and over and over and over again tells me that he is determined, he's resolved, and he has the will politically to do something about their situation. And that's in the interest of all of us. Yes, we may not be having external aggression. What happens if we have one? Do we want to have an army that feels maltreated or ill-treated? Will they stand up to defend you? So I see determination and commitment on the part of the president and the team to do something about not just the army. We've got to be focused on the security forces generally. Who's doing the day-to-day -day security protection? The army people, yeah, maybe walk army or something. But who's out there every day? You know the police people? You know the army of them? So there's the determination to, to solve their problem. When I sleep in my house in the night, I feel safe because I know police people are all there patrolling. They're not sleeping inside their wives and children. They're walking 24 hours to protect me while I sleep. Why should we pay them like they are slaves? The president has said that over and over he's concerned. So, Paul, I don't doubt that the president is determined to do something about security forces in general. Uh, and maybe so to analyze the budget. You know, you guys are the panelists, you're the generalists, you're the one holding our feet to the fire. When the host, when they, when they, I mean, when the legislature passes the budget, that's the one, and signed by the president, that's the one that can be found out. The one that came from us, they going to them. You know, it will go through all kind of processes, and by the time it's passed, that's going to be why it is. All right? But that's so, so, ask me so as it is. is. Budget debate. Raise the issue about what you think the budget represents. If it doesn't represent anything that will change the situation of the security people, the army, everything, begin to talk about it. The Lord make us to listen to you. Maybe we inform the judge. We, we, we are, we are uh, waiting, uh, Minister. Minister, we, we are waiting. You just called him back. Your government called him back in section. They should be there on Monday. And we'll raise the issue of the budget. Thank uh, you. This network is on top of where I've spoken to opposition and imposition lawmakers. They are willing to come and speak on the budget. And I must applaud them, like Senator Amara Conan, uh, Senator uh, Nathaniel McGill, and the rest of them. The long they are willing to talk about this budget. But let, let me let me let me just be because we're bringing in our to let me squeeze something in real quick from the cop. So to be on the record, there was no six hundred thousand payment made. Am I correct? As, as far as I know, as a spokesperson of the government. The NOCA leadership on Jake Kabakoli has not spent anything that resembles 600,000. The, so, the, the, so, the, the document, the doc, yes, sir, go ahead, go ahead, sir. So, NOCA has employees that are working. What are the leadership that is in train or permanent people with people will take pay when the month ends? Those are recurrent expenditures that must take place, right? The, the, the education benefit they talk about where they order in Warren that is 2,000. He didn't pay that, right? Nuka owes right down 300000 in rent. The very office they're in. He hasn't and paid he, that. And he, and he, we understand. Will Jake pay this or will he wait for Swakoko and her team to come in to make this payment? So, so it is not Jake's determination to determine whether they will pay because a bull is not constituted. He had a first bull meeting where he made a PowerPoint con con uh, uh, presentation. If the bull determines that they don't have to wait for Swa Koko and they authorize any payment, the payments will be done as a management decision. It will not be Jacob Akoli's decision. So is there, is right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I, beg you. I beg you guys, because I know Asi is not interested in Loka. He will come and say, oh, let me say my own. This is very big. This is about Jacob Akoli. This is about Loka. All right. What I say right. now, the, the, the chair on the board, who is Appleton, they came in already. They make the full assessment. If any payment moving forward that has to be made, 
it will have to be approved by the board. Go ahead, go ahead. We got the board is sitting. So why is Swakoko? Swakoko awaits confirmation by the Grand Senate. She has not been confirmed yet. Not to my knowledge. Okay. All right. So then, then Jake still remains as officer in charge. Then. Correct. Okay. What's the TOR of an officer in charge? What's your limit? What's your length? How much can Luka, you do? Luka, Luka is established by law and it has function to execute. Whether you are the CEO proper, whether you are an officer in charge, the entity should continue to operate as a shoe. Okay. So again, I think I'm okay with my question. Uh, you said there was there was no. Why is LCC investigating, sir? No, LCC is not investigating. They are not investigating Jacob Akoli. What the LCC is trying to investigate was not even done by Jacob Akoli. So when 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 the contract was made with BMC, right? BMC did not have a functioning and running account. They opened an account for them. When Luka made the first payment, which was not Jacob Akoli, the Safari Gray administration made the first payment, the money went into the account. The company had expenditure to make. They did, they did not allow the money to rest there. They removed the money instantly. The okay. LACC said that kind of transaction raises a red flag that there could be money laundering or something else. And that's what they are investigating. And that okay. was not done by Dick Tabacoli. No, it was done under the past administration. They the, investigation, the, the, the investigation is with the past, not the current. Correct. So I'm done. Let me bring in Asidu, I'm your mama, Mr. Duardo, and we move on. Thank you very much, Joe Lemix. Hey, folks, don't forget, we stay get uh, Colonel Patrick Sudu, the former IG. He will be coming to speak to the issue of the card I was taking from uh, his team today. Uh, Minister Doe, please. Patrick, you can talk. Can yeah, you sure. Thank you. So, uh, but I want the studio, if you are listening, my interest is the embarrassment that we saw today as a country we have to go forward. For them to can it, the studio can video that is there. I want the minister to respond to it. But very quickly, let me just clarify. The government of Liberia by the constitution has a term of six years, not five years, 11 months, or 10 months. So everything that happens within the six years. What did you say? Come again. What did you say? No, no, it's not you per se. I was just making a clarity. Oh, I said, okay. yeah, okay. I said, right the year, the government of Liberia has a constitutional term of six years, not five years and nine months or five years and three months. So even after the election, the government continues. It does not mean because God election came and it ended, so they can't do certain things. No, six years is defined as six years. So, studio, if you dare. Can you kindly of play for me that video? Uh, I want the minister well, to respond I think to our that. investigation is a broad investigation. It's just uh, less than a minute. people who stole government money, bought, um, you know, properties, converted them to their, their own use or converted them to their own names. So we are investigating those situations. So the yellow guys, you see, um, we have the intelligence, um, so we are using we the intelligence to begin so the process of investigation how the yellow cars have been acquired. So the so yellow cars have been acquired. So the yellow cars have been acquired. Is he like uh, jumping to conclusion? No, no, no. We are not jumping to conclusion. No, no, no. We are not jumping to conclusion. Flying is being about that. So that leads to something. And no car is being seen about that. And no car is being seen about that. So we can now move on. Okay. 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 So, Minister, let me quote again. These yellow vehicles you see and other vehicles are plying the street without document. And the one speaking. It's on the asset recovery thing. I didn't so see the man. I didn't see the man. I didn't see him seizing any yellow vehicle. The only information we know, and probably see that with me right here, that only Patrick Carter see, didn't see no yellow vehicle. Did he seize, did he seize a yellow vehicle? Said, yes, he said it in the clip. He said it. I didn't see him seizing yellow vehicle. I didn't see him seizing yellow vehicle. You don't have to. No, you don't. Okay. He was not on video. See, uh, no, no, Chief. Chief I, I really I admire mean, you. I said, this is what I told you. This is what I told you. This is what I told you, and we should respect each other. I say, you're not going to get an answer out of me that you want. As your guest, 
No, I, I don't know. Ask us to they, quite, listen to me. Listen to me. We're not going back and forth. I'm the only guest here. You're not a guest. You're a panelist. You ask me. In fact, I can even decide I'm not answering a question for you. That's part of my right. But I'm having a dialogue with you. Don't take the dialogue to me. You are another guest on the show. That's unacceptable. I have said yeah. I did not see the band seizing yellow vehicle, period. And Minister, okay. that is so, this. So, so, hold on, hold on, hold on. As a way. So, so, as a way. So, Minister Pia, let's give Asi the chance. Maybe you want to reframe his question and come back another way. Then you can answer it again. Isaac. Except you want, he except you want to a dialogue between Asi and I, and you got, you got ten no, 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 here. No, no, he got, he got two questions to ask you. I said, yeah, I, 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 I said, we play, we so, play the video. What, what, what's your point about the video, sir? We are, we are, we are on a platform where we dialogue, uh, minister. And if anyone usually uh, talk. Disrespectfully at guests, I can guarantee you it's not Isaac though. You want to check the rescue, the rescue folks. You want to check that. So I wasn't asking you, Minister, if you saw someone arresting yellow car or blue car. I was only asking you to respond to what he said on the tape. And he said, unquote, these yellow cars are here. I am not saying respond if you saw him. I wasn't Did asking for didn't your leave host and see you go straight to you? Let him finish. I beg you, let him finish. He finished. I'm sorry. He's not done. He's not done yet. Let him finish. Go ahead. So again, I was saying, I wanted to respond to what he was saying, not what you saw. What he said was what I wanted to respond for. I wasn't right, asking so, you about what you saw. So there's my answer to that. Your CEO mm -hmm. just told you, I think by Friday, you're bringing the asset recovery team here. Martin will be here asking the question. How big, how difficult that is? Let's Thank you. On. Is Thank that you. very difficult for you, brother? I think you you said it right, Jeremy. I said you have another question in regards to no car. Well, the government is interesting. You know, I keep hearing the minister saying, "I don't know this. This one, I'm not informed, not to my knowledge." It's I didn't tell you that. For... I didn't tell you that. I will not be sitting on the platform for you to lie. Let's keep that keep no. the conversation civil. Don't be personal and don't be don't, don't be disingenuous. I, I I I can be the most disingenuous person at times if I want to. Well, yeah, I can be too many so, minutes. So, 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 let me ask yeah. Do you have a question on the car? Well, is my question right? I can either have a question or have a statement, like everybody. Yes, right? sure that's structure. You structure a show according to topic. We can be on car business throughout the whole show. I only can sit down a show three hours for car business. You so want to car, say, you don't want to car because I'm trying to spend all that money. So, so let's go ahead and do, do your so, do your right, statement. Give we'll me statement very quickly. The minister is saying to a lot of things. He's not aware. He does not have the information. He can speak to that. He doesn't know. It only shows the level of coordination in the government. Mr. Pia is the minister of information. We are the consumers. We don't care on who gave him information, who didn't give him information. The people expect for their minister of information to tell them whatever way by which you will get the information is posting. But it only says a lot of the rest of the team. Yeah, in your minister of information, Keep responding to a lot of things. I don't know. Okay, I don't have information. Do that that friend, it is a little child. Okay, we want to do it. The simple you. thing is that you have no question. And and sometimes when you don't have questions, say, I don't have one. Uh, so it, it's not just a freedom of people to hear you. It doesn't so mean every time as you do appear on the show, people should hear you. You have to do it. Minister Pia. You cannot come on a show and try to be confrontational. Respect your Pia. Minister Pia, we want to bring in the 4,500 and that of the NASCAR, I mean, it's fair to bring it in. What can you tell Liberians? Are we not asking a question again? Yeah, I we're asking a question. question. I no, didn't God. even ask. You didn't call us yeah. to something else. No. no, no, listen now. Listen, you remember? You asked your question on the first level. But no, we, and, you, you went, we, and I'd like to point something out to you. In, in all fairness, the night when I came here, when I decided to ask you, pointed out to me, we on asset recovery. 
As a kid, right. now or as a recovery, we own the car. Yeah, let me you the as a you recovery, cannot, you, you cannot put your file in the limit. You are being biased. Yeah, you mean. I know that I have say so, but you the guess, you cannot be Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, you are so correct. You are so correct. When it comes to your question, come on, there's no way you have to recover it. But I have to go and think what you're in a time for any second. You can go and have to recover it, you can go and look up, you can go and have to freedom. That's it. Jerry, let me be I told you what to guess. You want to be balanced here. We have to check with you. Andrew, mama, let's go ahead. Your question. You know, this same thing every day, day between Glenn and myself. Thank you. Okay, my question is because I said we don't have too much opportunity on this. Andrew, mama, you really don't have a question for Jeremy <laughs> Pierre. You know that. Let's let ask our question, please. Okay, my question is Minister. Yes, ma'am. You said that um, Mokam is a non performing. Uh, entity. entity. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then, my question is, why should the taxpayer of Liberia pay these people who are known for performing? That's my first question. So when I said the entity is not the performing, it's not about the individuals who are there. They met. They inherited what they have, and that entity was created by law. And 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 Joseph Boga can now wake up some money and. It's like creation to say, let there be light, and there was light. So you can't just get and say, oh, no car is a non performing entity, there should be no more no car, and therefore there's no more no car. What I'm trying to speak to, and that's, a, that, that, that's part of the point that Sam Jackson was making, when no car was, was established, at the time we we're doing oil exploration, and all of that, and all of you here, yeah, many of you who are knowledgeable, Alva, and other people there, we all know that it's, it's no secret that the way cash flow into no car those days, it's not what you're having. Nobody doing oil exploration and all of that. So if, if, the, if the entity is really performing, why would you not even be able to pay 132000 that you owe people as an educational benefit? Why would you be owing your contractor when you should be on schedule? Why should you be owing that 800000 that you cannot pay at current? Even though you have money, by the way you did things, to pay the servant to all these officials, and the one that is so small like, education benefit that the people can get it you 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 operating in people building right now you owe for for, for two months three hundred thousand you can't pay it. you left all of those things and don't pay on an incoming government to inherit and somebody is holding on temporarily you begin to make wildcat accusations against them on something that is unsubstantiated so that's what i was talking about says Jimama. but it's an entity and it's definitely the innovation of people i always tell people when I was going to the Ministry of Information, people say, that dead place, where you going there? I admit it, the place is there. But I have the determination to transform that dead place in a place that Dwaru can pass tomorrow and say, is this the Ministry of Information that Jeremy P.I. inherited? That's why we should be as Liberians. We should be people determined to make change. If you are looking for lucrative places as the only basis of saving, something is wrong. It has to be a red flag. Why do you only want to be in a performing entity? Why do you want to be in a place you call a lucrative entity? Why are you not prepared to take on a dead horse and transform it into something? If Liberia can begin to tap people who don't care about how lucrative a place is, and they will begin to embrace their places, determined to transform those places, then the country is taking the first step towards posterity. Okay, my second question would be, um, the Liberian if local is not actually producing oil, you're not producing anything, nothing is coming in, then why would why would we first keep that entity? Can we transfer those employees to other entities that are more viable or or why should we keep local? If we have to take the burden, government has to take money from elsewhere to be paying the employees there and to be paying such a benefit like those benefits that we pay off. What law requires that a government is, 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 is inter interchanging, right? A new government is coming in. They'll start getting the right to pay seven pay on their own. They just get and then make decisions and they're paying themselves huge amount of money and then leaving the uh, 
the educational money that they own the employees leave that money on top and just pay themselves and then and then amend the contract why would you amend the contract in the time meaning where you have two point uh two point nine million then you carry up to four four point five million mm -hmm. is that right <laughs> what do we do about my, that my, anybody can just do anything that they want to do some, when the government, government is new government is coming sometimes certain things are just common sense i know we can raise all the legal questions about when the government elected you let them for six years as, as a job of pushing but all of you sit here which one of you believe that if you had a genuine contract for 2.9 million you go to an election you are whipped you amend the contract add an additional 1.5 million take the contract's value from 2.9 million to 4.5 million after you've lost election and somebody is justifying by say by saying the government got six years what changed overnight why was this contract worth 2.9 million all of a sudden after you lost election it's worth 4.5 uh, million and you what? pay 50 percent off from exactly i mean mommy knows more about that i i let that information out and then you're talking about why they pay the say ng mama who approves the payment the board the chair of the board got 66,000 plus. The other two members got 56,000 each. Well, Chair, well, 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 let me ask a question. So I don't want to comment. We understand that you lay that basic, and it's a good question, Andrew Mama asked you, let me, why are you guys still carrying on BMC? Because if BMC knew that they went ahead to change this contract for political gain, I think I buy grandly, then they will have so many questions on it because then your first contract what changed? Why are we still dealing with BMC? Minnesota. Because you have a legitimate contract with BMC. Your past government had a legitimate contract that you cannot undo, and BMC is doing their work. I'm told they've done up to 85 percent of the job, right? Irrespective of what the value of the of, of, of the of the stuff is, we have an obligation, and that's what the problem is. When Jake made the presentation to the board. Is because the payment schedule as agreed upon in the contract has passed, and you owe eight hundred thousand in this to this group of people. So let's go ahead and uh, Glenny come in, Ava, Mr. Dwalu, and Mame. Then we'll move. On. But uh, listen, Mr. Dwalu, you can come in. You went off. It's Glenny time. I don't want well, her to strangulate me. Let Dwalu go. Are, are you are you comment. sure? It's not on me. I have a, I'm not that. saying I don't have a question. I do have a comment. But Dwalu, if he has a question, he can. I'm going to use my time for my comment, sir. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, stand up. Stand up from eight to twelve. Oh, you want me to see here? You want to twelve? Oh. My man, it's just eleven sixteen. But how you I went way, way around Rich Institute. After this lady. round, after this round, we're done with you. Let me. So, but I've been through here. He's from a police man. He put me. He kept me home. But you said the man there. You don't want us to bring the man on. Why you don't want us to bring him on? No, he keep. When you he say I'm a man. He can't listen to me, but he can't be guess what? Guess no. Let me that one. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look, uh, the, the minister says something about the soldiers. We must serve those who serve us. For me, I hold the soldiers in the highest esteem because I don't think we're doing right by them. They need more. Um, and another thing the minister said that I agree with, no government agency should be lucrative. No government agency should be lucrative. We shouldn't look at government in that fashion. Take your pay, take your benefit, and step aside. The lucrativeness should come to the citizens of that society. Now, Stanton, you will not bother me from there. I want to go to the minister. Now, he's already said here, Honorable Jacob Akali did not give away any $600,000. And there's this, all these claims coming from government. My question to the minister is very simple. There is this perception now about the Liberian government that some things that are happening that are not being addressed, that is akin to corruption. How are you addressing or what strategy are you going to employ to address some of these perceptions because they are bothering me that this image is going out there, that this administration is no different from the previous administration? You are asking question? Yeah. Or you are saying something? I ask a question. Oh, you are breaking, so I'm not sure I got the question. Let me repeat the question. There is a perception out there regarding the Joe Joseph Bagale administration that is no different from the WE administration that is becoming corrupt, that people are taking money, 
You still cannot hear me? Yeah, okay. So the first thing I want to start off, Patrick agree with me that appearing in the studio with me will be disrespect. So he said he gone, I'm gonna tell you he's gone. He yelled disrespect the, the government minister of information, so he gone. Patrick, I respectful man. respectful, respectful guy as I have known him to be most of the time. Yeah, so no, thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Perception. So you, know, you know, you know, gentlemen, that's a scan talk. You no, no, I can't talk, man. I can't do respect to be in the studio with you. You surprised him, man, and now you're saying the man didn't respect for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Dwalu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, so you say perception on what, uh, Dwalu? About corruption in okay, the, the government. government. Is no different from the we are government, right? Yes, this is the perception. That I'm not saying it's truthful, but our perception does exist. Even you will admit this. How are you going to address that, or what measure are you employing? I, in the I, I don't know why will anybody say that, and that's what I told Sam Jackson. You believe people stole money during the past government? Robert Sally then stole. They person stole. You did nothing. We believe people stole. We're taking action to hold them accountable. Difference number one. Everywhere in our street, coach and all terrible drugs are killing our people. You see them visible in the street acting like zombies. Even Kroma and his team nip it in the butt. Mysterious killing and disappearances all over the place. To the extent that we still want to get to the root of how people who were working and providing services to the government died in the way the way they died. No semblance of that. And you have a perception that nothing has changed. These people let government coffer empty. As I speak to you, people are beginning to take mass pay. Oh, it wasn't it true that people were owing civil service up to three, four months where they go even pay one month? You don't see that difference? Wasn't it true that when it's even seven o'clock, people running from the street? When I leave your studio, I drive in the street, I see people all oh, they got a sense of redemption. What are we talking about? Perception? EPS officer protecting the president wearing party t shirt You will see that happening on a Joseph Walker? Perception? What are we talking about here? No, stand on the environment, not the same. You gave for diplomatic passport for six years, unheard of. You teach it all to their families, they're everybody. You teach it all to even criminals and crooks. We're changing that story. We want our country, we want our country to be respected again. When people hold our diplomatic passport, they should be respected for holding those passports. We want to find that in the hands of criminals. Per perception. The president gave an instruction in December, by December 3rd or somewhere about. No additional employment. Nobody cares. Nobody listened to him. They employ hundreds of people. If you listen to the, the CSA boss, he has black pavement to all of those people. Because the fact that the president has issued an instruction, and even his people working with him were not prepared to follow those instructions. Wasn't that an indication that the country was lawless? How do you compare that kind of scenario with what you have today? I don't know where those perceptions come from. But the red things on the wall are clear. That there's a clear break from the past. And that Liberia will rise again. Liberia will surely rise again. Stanton, Dwalu, I can tell you that. Those perceptions, yes, people are entitled to them. I don't see the basis. I don't see the empirical evidences that shows that there's no change from what we saw yesterday in our country. Like I told you, I drive around the place. I live Broadway where my brother Ash is supposed to live. The country has been run by Barrow Medicine. I like... I'm not even traveling out of the city. I'm traveling right from Broad Street to Dwala. And I'm asking, where was the bar road medicine? At one point, they call it darkness medicine. Where I live in Broadway, I spent $20 every night to buy fuel for my generator. Meanwhile, I have not been paid a dime since I came to this country. Forgot about me. But look at the amount of ordinary people living in those neighborhoods who are in touch with electricity, who can't get it. They left those places abandoned. Quite bon water, that's a dream. I buy bottled water to drink. And got wealth in, 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 in my yard at my level. Imagine what the rest of the population passing through. We had a failed nation. That country was a nation in peril. Those who don't believe that the country is rescued, excellent. 
the dividend may not be showing in the first two months. Maybe. But I'm confident that we're on the red track, that we're on the red path. Chairman Lemme Pierre, Information Minister. Information Minister General Lemme Pierre, we want to say thank you very much. We allow the order to ask their question. But I think you've been the information minister of the government. Uh, you're doing exactly what you were asked to do. And again, you are reassuring hope and giving back to the Liberian people that the rescue is here to rescue. We're going to go to Asif Atubat, Glenny, uh, Mabe, and Sam Jackson, and we'll call this a day because you have to leave. And let me just announce that on Monday, you know, the Ministry of Information used to have press conference once every week. We've been constrained to sometimes do it three times a week. This, 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 this week alone, Tuesday, Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday, we're doing it. Next week, we're doing it three days. And one of the individuals who we invite on one of the three days of next will be Jacob Akali. We don't have press conferences on Monday, but we'll bring Jake. Because the conversation here is not sufficient, right? Jake will be on, and the Noka issue will be delved into deeper than what I have said we want to continue to give the kinds of information we will give to the public. I said I don't want to be a minister of information who is reactive. I bring the information to you. You react to me when you disagree. <coughs> so it's, good. it's a good announcement. You said Jake will come to yeah, you Jake guys on Monday. And, and again, like you always do, invite the press and everyone will follow from different outlines of the media. We want to say thank you. Ava, you have your last question for Minister yeah. Pierre? So, um, in terms of this whole officer in charge, is there a set government policy that governs the action, the decisions, and whatever of the officer in charge? If there is, can you share that policy? If there is not, in your opinion, do you think and I'm assuming, believing you, that Jake did not make any transaction of 400000 or 600000 But in the absence of that, do you think an, officer's in, uh, an officer in charge to have that leeway or that level of authority to expend that kind of dollar amount in the short time that he's there in charge of that institution? Absolutely no. Absolutely no, Azzy. I, I think it would not be a, a, a perfect financial practice if you were to do that because these entities are established, established with structures that ensure check and balance. That's why you have a bull, right? For the time Jake was there, no bull has been constituted. Any expenditure in that kind of tone would have been unilateral, astronomical, and maybe not consistent with the scope of his authority as just officer in charge. The only reason why Jake proposed the payment of the 400000 was because he already had a board in place. And had the board endorsed the action, then it meant that the action was a whole of no card decision because a board would have approved it. As he proposed that, the board did not approve, the board did not agree, no such payment was made. So the entire concept of spending 400, I mean 600000 in two months, no. But to answer your question clearly, Personally, I don't believe officers in charge should have that kind of scope of spending public money when there's no check and balance. And I think that's part of the reason why that did not happen. The first question about okay. is there a standard policy? I didn't I don't think you addressed that. So I do not have to attend to know everything to misinform you. I will have to find out whether we have a standing policy as to how officers in charge conduct themselves when they are put in charge. I like that. It, it, I look forward it, to your return to get it. Yeah, Thank again, you. Jerry Lima Pierre, you always welcome, man. This is the Spoon Talk. Uh, having you once or twice a week or having you every two, three weeks or once a month will be necessary because you come with some some level of understanding as you enter out with folks here. And a lot of folks want to listen to you. We appreciate you. We're going to do our closing uh, as our last question to you because you have to leave. Uh, Glenny, let allow Mame to go because he has to leave us too. Then you can come in, please. Mame? Yeah, I'm making my, my closing, my asking question. The people who are alleged to have stolen government assets will not detect to us 
how to refuse your assets. Will not take that. The asset recovery team will pursue them in accordance with law. Criminals and alleged criminals and their allies, whether on radio talk show or on Facebook, will not detect how we retrieve those assets from them. Those assets will be retrieved from them in accordance with law. We wanted to state that and we want the asset recovery team to re-emphasize, not take instruction from anybody who will pursue him for asset. We will stick with the law and pursue you wherever you are. The next thing to Noka, the board will be demonstrating gross incompetence and financial irresponsibility yes. if they go ahead and pay that money. The current bank balance of Noka as a January was 1.2 million USD. If you owe in and you take all your money in your bank account and pay debt and close the door, that's financial irresponsibility. The best thing to do, the auto contracts have conditions for review. The new management should sit with the rental company that is renting the entity they're renting the, 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 the office from and make payment plans on adjustments. The contractors, those contracts, have conditions for review. They should make adjustments so that the company has resources to be able to carry on its operation and bring in more money. There are potential in the oil sector. We know that most of those potentials were undermined because the first step we are took when he took over. Most of the companies pull back. They are washing. They want to come. You need to engage them. The new resources, the new head of Nuka and other people need to get out to organize programs. You take all your money, you pay debt, and sit and close the door. That would be the most irresponsible decision the board will make. Hold the payment, let the new management come, engage the contractor, review the contract, engage the landlord, make payment plan. A lot of government institutions are making arrangements with their with their with their with their, with their landlords. Or making payment plans. There's no urgency. So that's why I would say on the local team, the board should not make the payment. The board should wait for the management to come and go into discussion with those different people and see how money can remain with the entity so the entity can be able to engage and bring in more money. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right, Glenny. So, Honorable Pierre, let me, let me say how let me express if, let's say how proud I am of you, how okram you are, you are of the of the this gentleman. Don't worry yourself. I will praise my boss up brother here tonight. I'm extremely proud of you. You're well learned. You 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 have the information at the tip of your fingers. And I like what you said when you said that you're not going to be a reactive minister, and you've lived up to that today. I appreciate the fact that you've come up here tonight, out here tonight, and clarify some of the issues surrounding Jacob Akoli. And it would be important, that was one of the things I said, when we hear this story, it is important that the government act upon it immediately to, 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 to you know, debunk whatever the issue is, the, the issues are so that people know what the truth is. So Monday, we'll be looking forward to hearing from Jake, but I have no comments to you but I have the ultimate respect for you. Thank you so much, my Barca brother. Since the people first, we got our five Barca people here. We can, we, we're fighting you. We are five here. We are proud of you and good job on what you've done. Keep coming back. Keep coming back here. We appreciate you. Thank so, you, Stanton. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Jeremy Pierre, let me say this to you. Uh, you always <laughs> welcome a spoon. <laughs> Many of us go through this every second, so you don't worry about it. But uh, uh, listen, we have to bring in the 4,500. Talk to us about the 4,500 from uh, Sylvester Gracie. And also, I want you to just take a snap at uh, the 117,000 that was requested by Sylvester Gracie prior to President Joseph Yimabwaka taking over from NASCAR. Yeah, Stanton, can I take a minute and just close out? I have to leave. Go ahead, Asi. Close. Man, yeah. it's, 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 it's one minute. I can't do as a door doing the show from home, I, in your studio, I got to drive from here to rage. You want a man to run away? I don't want to hear you again. I don't want to hear you again.
If I'm I here at this hour, why, why is it doing living? You know what? You're right. You're right. Why are you just preferring as a doing man? You can't be treating, giving a man preferential treatment all your show. I mean, you gotta stop. You know, you should I save my stuff and I leave the rest of the people. I hope you're not, you're not getting cue from uh, Jamama with a cutie because they would disturb, it would, it would mess you up. You know? I know, right? So, yeah, but... let, let me say, like, it's a country of law has always been a country of law. The, the, the laws of this country will dictate how things go. As that recovery thing will not be a res an irresponsible thing, and the law will not allow that. As a recovery will not get on the street and be asking people to bring that document to show ownership of their car. No. As a well, as 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 that why you did what, that why you did to me and did it to other people? Me. Chief, let, let me end now. But you I know, did. So what are you saying now? Chief, let, let, let me end. So as a recovery will not be irresponsible. One, one of the things we always recite and forget is that the rescue came to make things right. So it kind of looks so funny to me when people keep saying that's why you're dead. So did you come to do what no, we did? No, the only reason why I'm saying that you say the country has always been a country of law, and the law has always okay. been a law. Okay. Is there a law Very well. How you say that? Thing? Very well. And you just said it here. You just said it here. I'm going to say between that. Right. Right. You, know, you always in your feelings, my my small city, my empty. So again, again. No, no, no. I, I will close. I will close. So if it were wrong, then you should have sued the government, like you were telling Sam Jackson as well. But again, I will disturb the show the whole day. I will. Let me just end. Let me just end. Give me one minute. I beg you, please. I beg you, please. I beg you, please. I beg you, please. I beg you, We have to close you on a good note. I said, please finish up. So again, again, they will follow the law. They won't be on the street like people without not thinking of what they want to do. Well, let me say, uh, Minister, one of the people who will come and tell Liberia on a radio station when you are in AC, you are that I know Liberia is better, now things are better, will be people like you, Minister. What I want to advise you, Minister, please get down from your AC car, leave your AC office, go on the street, go in the market, and ask the people. You will find a few things. One, so you know happy. I'm not going to allow you to escape with that one, right? Your people you don't want the mutual information. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. You are going to want the mutual information. The only person who is free is to pretend like you are better. So I sit in that office and scream. And the best thing is that I've been living in America for the last few years. Sit down and act like you are not anything. That's what you are. People are you saying your office has no uh, AC? I don't say that. But the AC runs by something. What puts AC on? That water or that gas? That electricity can put AC on. Every functional entity to run must have a generator because, especially in the context of Liberia, where the power sector has failed us, right? That ministry does not even have a target generator, not a target of one that puts a generator on. Sometimes, LEC takes the current by one o'clock. Wow. I will not leave the office because LEC current gone. I sit in the heat. That's what I inherited from, from as a those government. I said, do it, but comfort. I said, if I wanted that comfort you're talking about in America, West Tender, all the time, I said, I see current going in my house, in everywhere I was, I enjoy current 24 7. I would have stayed there. I came back home because I want to help. And I said, on the show, maybe you forgot. When I went to Harvard, my mom and pardon paid my school fee. They would say, government pay the school fee, but I tax payers that are so the people pay my school fee. I have an obligation 
to ensure that that education help the country. That is what I have gone to do. It's not about comfort. And I didn't tell you here that Liberia had turned to heaven. I've never said that. I will never say that. But Brother Dwaru talked about perception. I was trying to make the point that that perception can now hold. Because those things are pointed to a clear indication of the difference. I can say a litany of them like I'm singing in a choir. That will show that their perception cannot hold because the situations are not the same. Does that mean that Liberia has turned to heaven? How could I say that? I'm worse enough. So I didn't say that, brother. And Thank don't you very be much, when we're discussing you. national issues, why are you concerned about you. your personal comfort? You want you want to be personal in a conversation? I, I said, wait, I said, I said, now, now you're disrupting me, right? Now you're disrupting me. I said, let me say something. You asked me. You want to tell me about air condition? Why you sat in, in the middle of your sport? Minister Pia, one minute. Minister Pia, one minute. I said, yes, you said you said you're going to close. We have to move on to other people to really yes, ask the I'm last question. I can be looking at my phone. I even talk for two minutes. Yeah, yeah, but but I I say, if you want to hang on, you want to hang on, then we'll come back to you. But we must we 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 at least see you. We need to go with the minute. I said, do I say we we appeal to you, we see you tomorrow, but we must give well, I say, to tomorrow. You're, you're enjoying the show, but we can incorporate okay. other people's view. Everybody uh, can be right. talking. I will sit down, I will not all right. I, all right. Thank I, you. I, got to be, I can only look at my time on my phone. Uh, and, okay, know, I said, I, I say I believe that. Thank you. I have a good night. Thank you. All right. Uh, Minister Pierre, let's get into the 4500. I mean, it's very interesting. I beg you, let's get into the 4500 and the NAS NASCAR uh, 117,000 that were requested by Sylvester Grisby. I know we are totally out of time. Can you quickly give us what you know on those two things? So this is what I know. And, and it would not be the question of whether something is right or wrong, but this is what I know. Towards the end of the administration when the transition was taking place, don't forget, we had a joint presidential transitional team that was bringing together actors from the outgoing government and actors from the incoming government. The outgoing government started to renege on its obligations. All the role work that was going on, you and you got a detail from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to have the role in the condition leaving from the airport to town, that process was abandoned by the government. Joseph Buaka is a man who has been in North Korea. When people come and nothing is functioning, it reflects on him. The airport, everybody was boasting about how we have built new VIP or presidential launch. You have not asked the question as to how it got completed. It was not him. We were having all the high profile guests. We're talking about vehicles here. They have squandered all the vehicles. You couldn't see any vehicle. No guests that were coming, it was of interest to us as to how they were treated. No money were anywhere. Social security is a part of the government. We would have to take shift on our face that our international people were not treated as animals. Grace Bay therefore rules social security for them to ensure that we bought five vehicles. Those five vehicles were bought. Those five vehicles are available. Now, we, we, we done, the government then came to power. The government does not even have a budget. The current ongoing budgetary process is the government's first budget. Assuming the minister decided to buy five cars because they too don't have cars. Right? They already have the five cars, but what but what social security spend? It will be the matter of giving the cost of the five cars you should have buy back to social security because you already have cars. But here is what happened, Stanton. The embarrassment and disgrace we would have faced by not even having dignified vehicle to convey very important guests were resolved by that intervention. My situation where it will be, if Grace Bay asked for 117,000 and squandered it, or converted to public use, the five vehicles that were bought are available. They serve the purpose for which it was intended, to have our guests conveyed, since we did not have vehicle to convey them. You might argue all about the process, or PPCC, or this one, or that. What it did is save the country from an embarrassment, and the fact that it can be accounted for, 
The fact that those vehicles are available, there was no criminality, there was no criminal intent. It portrays us internationally as people who are civilized, who respect guests, and who did the right thing to keep their guests. Allow us, allow, us, allow us to just ask you the question. Was Grace Favor in his, as per his position, as a vassal to the president in life? Was he legally right? to write social security, requesting them for vehicle. We're not hearing you, sir. Nelson, we are not hearing your limit, Pierre. We are, we are not hearing you, Nelson. Go ahead. I want to be careful. I'm not going into legality. I'm not pleading law. I'm pleading common sense. The outgoing government ban on everything. You got no car for international, serious international guests. The embarrassment that comes with that comes from the incoming government. The government touched something needed to be done. They bought those cars. No cars are available. We heard that, Jeremy. Yeah, so... Let me so we get it. Let me ask a question again. Everybody asking the same question. You had a JPTT. You had a team. The outgoing government and the incoming government. Don't you think it looks so fishy for everyone, for Grisby, a vassal to the president elect at the time, to bypass the JPTT and request the social security to buy vehicle. How do you how do you know he bypassed? As, 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 as per his letter, it wasn't from the JPTT. Yeah, but it, 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 the, 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 some of the authorities that you have were beyond the JPTT. So no, the we, is, we are sticking with the executive order that came on, and you know that Gerald Limit Pierre and I spoke to. Chair, let me let me rest for my question, please. I'm begging you. Again. But, but, but you, friendly, I will not be on the 12 minutes. You don't want me to die tomorrow, you don't have me on your show anymore. This is level five six, don't you? But but so we reached the point. We reached the point that you want to leave. I'm not I answer your question, question. I can still answer. I'm just reminding no, you. No, no, no. I'm just reminding you that it becomes it becomes it becomes unfair when you bring a guest in your studio from eight o'clock to twelve midnight. It becomes so unfair. Abba, you see, I'm not trying to leave, Abba. We reached a very important topic. And I'm not stopping. Go ahead. I'm just reminding you that I have to go, but you can go ahead and ask the question. Well, my question is as per right. the document, as per yeah. the letter of written, right? The JPTT from both the incoming and the outgoing had no knowledge about this letter. I can say that. They told you that? Yes. 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 Who told you that for the JPTT? No, 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 no. Don't do that, Jerry Limit. You know who no, I, I am. Tell you that. Jerry Limit, let me finish. Let me finish. I beg you, if you don't know, if you say you don't know, and we'll move on. I'm asking, sir. I don't know you to tell me. You, I will not force you to answer my question like any other. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, and the librarian people will judge. But why you can't tell me who for the JPTT told cannot, you that? I cannot reveal my sources to you. I'm saying <laughs> they did. And you know that. You know me, and I know you. But the fact remains is that the letter was written as a secret letter, Jeremy Pierre. And for this reason, if you listen to Senator Amara Corner today on OKFM, they are big, they were called and they are questioning the letter. I don't want to beat on you because maybe you don't have the full knowledge of this whole thing. But the letter was written as a secret letter. The team of the JPP, Joseph Yeman Bwaka, and the team of the JPP, George Manawea, had no knowledge about this letter. Tell so, I mean, let me say this to you. Let me, let me say this to you because, you know, I said, I'm not sure I have to go. Are you aware that even with the expanded JPTT, that there was a, there was a committee on inauguration? Are you also aware that Brisbane was the co-chair of that committee on inauguration? Don't you believe that those portfolios gave him some authority and you know well informed that authority? And yes, what really was the committee that was on the inauguration was subject. Yes, yes, to yes well. was, was, No, 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 no. I will hold you there. They were subject to the general JPTT from both ends. They were and so did the JPTT the complain JPTT. about the action? And Sylvester Gracefield was not on the committee at the time. The formulation of the JPTT, Sylvester Gracefield was in the United States. When Sylvester Grisby went back home to Liberia, the I, letter was written. I discussing inauguration. Wasn't he co-chair of the inauguration no, committee? No, brother, brother, brother. If you want me to help you, I can give you all the document I have. It's put in one instant, Jeremy. So, so no, no, listen, now. Here's the point I want to make. I don't want us to go back and forth. I thank you, Jeremy. You and myself from the same area. On this show, 
It's not the only request that was done by Sylvester Grace through Social Security. We have document, and I will show the document. Mm -hmm. I'll share the document with some other folks. He made some additional requests. I want you to understand if you want to go and back they, and, asking, they, and the social security will not, asking, and the social security will not give you no request go, after she was fired. They, I don't talk to her. I don't talk to her. You're not being fair. 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 You're I'm not going to see that we don't have police officer money me. I'm not going to see that we don't have a police officer money me. I'm not going to see that we don't have a police officer money me. I'm not going to see that we don't have a police officer money me. I want you to be safe. Let me the man gotta go home. I'm I know you ask my question. I know, I know you don't want to go on this one. I will let, let, let you ask my question. No, no, no. Uh, so, so your concept is wrong. I don't have to answer a question to why you want. Okay, so I don't walk away don't from any question. I'm not going to answer the question. No, 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 if I don't do what I'm doing now, you keep me at 1 a.m. If I die tomorrow, you're going to get my train fast and to eat. Pure. I'm going to go back. You can't keep me on a train for 1 a.m. Let me end this thing. Let me end this thing. Let me ask my question quick. Let me ask my question quick. But my question is time. Y'all are closing. What do you want to ask my question? I got to go, Sam. No, I got to go. I got to go. If they are concerned about theft or something, it's open to an investigation. Mr. Grace Bay is not above the law. Okay. Okay. Is no, no, I mean, I would say, wait, I think you're limited, making a very good point. I would say, yeah. like, you. Know, the determination is, is made that Grace Bay conducted or undertook certain transgression or integrity problem. It's not above the law. But what I've said to you is the concept. Did we want the guests that were coming to tell them we get a car? Did we want to put them in wee barrel? It solved a problem at that time. But if, if there was a situation of fraud, as you were insinuating, nothing stops anybody from holding Mr. Grisby accountable. But all I have said to you is action he took was meant to get five cars. The five cars are available. The five cars were used to commute guests. It served a purpose. And Larry Farkas. Larry Farkas. Who owns them? You want to see them? Send your team of general. I come in. You want to see them? Send your team for spoon. We will go on a tour. We will show them the cars. All right, Jeremy. Mac. It's good having you always. We have fun when we have you on the show because this is how it is. We know you. But listen, we we love having you. We give Uncle Sam. We make Uncle Sam have the last word, Jeremy. Make for the respect of okay, him. Mr. Uncle Sam. Let me hear, Mr. Mr. Minister. I'm a member of the National Patriotic Party of Liberia. I was a full-fledged minister. The NPP and the CDC and other parties were in a collaboration. So that government was my government and that was my party in power, just in case you didn't know. The second thing is for you to come here tonight and say that Sylvester Grisby, the only option he had was to send letter to Social Security for an event that was lasting for one day to buy five cars for $117,000. When you could have rented cars, there were several options available. You could have rented cars. You could have borrowed cars from prominent librarians who want Joe, Joe Walker to, to, to succeed. What he did borders on criminality. He did not so have then, the authority. Then, then take the finish. Finish. Let me finish. Take the action. Take the Let me finish. 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 A borders on criminality and taking the monies from all pensioners like myself. I am entitled to social security in Liberia right now, but I'm not claiming it because I understand of the subjective circumstances in the country. If the cars but are for the Ministry of State and the Ministry of State put the pension money, 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 money,
to come from the person of poor people. 70, 80, and 90 they years. for money because the government stole all the money and broke the government down. Broke money. The government could not even provide money for inauguration. So we got to find money for the inauguration. The government was a corrupt criminal attack and then robbed the country and we needed to portray our country image before the international guests. You can yell all you want. Have, I'm not yelling. Options. I'm not yelling. There but you, you, options. you, you got a personal problem with Grace Bessie. You're all, you're all in time, boy. You're gonna fix it. That's the point. Listen to me. You're gonna fix your old time problem. I don't. Let's, okay, let me finish now. Grace Bessie. But Sam, I gotta go home, man. You get, you get, you get, you get to the impression that they, they don't want to come. I'm just saying. 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 I'm just Listen, guys, listen, Uncle Sam, listen, I say, bye. listen, Uncle Sam, please. Uh, Uncle Sam, I beg you, please. Minister Pierre, thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate you every single day. Indeed, it's six minutes to uh, 12 in Liberia, which is six minutes to eight years. Would you please give us your parting statement? And then uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, Information Minister Jeremy, Jeremy Mc Pierre. Thank you, Stanton. Um, I will always come. And like I said on the last show, not even year alone, uh, I have concluded with my brothers on a closing argument. I'm going there the next time. I'm going to SKTV. I'm going everywhere. Uh, I enjoy every bit of all that we do here. Forget about the up and down voice. You have an obligation. I have my obligation. The place we defer basically is when you ask me questions and you expect me to answer according to your details and understanding. That's where the problem is. But you have the right to ask anything you want to ask. These old boys don't mind their stand on. They're not like our generation. They got long term beef that they're struggling with. I know what they're saying, Jassy and Bridgeway Power, they want to do their beef thing fine. But I have provided what I believe is an explanation, acceptable or not. If he believes, as he has indicated, that there was act of criminality, Grace Bay, I want to repeat, it's not above the law. Several efforts were made. The inauguration were on January 22nd. That letter written by Brisbane was when? The 17th, right? 17. It shows that a lot of effort were made. For you, it didn't matter. The guests will walk. For us, once the money was spent for you a couple. You a car. You, you, you argue with me again. You argue with me again. You see again? Yeah, you, you arguing? Uncle Sam, you argue close. You argue I'm again. Uncle Sam, again. Again. Uncle Sam, he's closing. Uncle Sam, he's closing. We got to go. Oh, you know, my you come from London School of Economics. You know something called self respect for your colleague. Try to give me. You thought I want to leave. Why you can't let me talk? No, I don't, I don't want to talk here. You black me. You don't want black me. No, you feel it. You feel it. The best time I say my party come and then you jump back again. Uncle Sam, he got to close. Uncle Sam, he got to close. Please. Go ahead. So, Stanton, you see, so you accuse the Basel Pope for nothing. One of the men who has become the disruptor in chief is a Basel man. And he's not brought any level to, to, to learn my talks, but it's good. I'm an old man. I ain't got a problem with him. So, what? look, Stanton, <laughs> we, we always be here. We always be here. We're not run away from any issue. Don't forget that the, the, the information minister is like a cleaner in chief. You're not asking me this question because I did something personally. These are concerns you have about the government. Will I run away from them? No, I will continue to come because that's what I sign up for. Right? And I want to repeat Samuel Jassin and anybody else, don't put this administration that is two months old on a pedestal with your regime. The disparities are wide. The disparities are wide. And I'm not used to saying knows that. That regime you supported, that you're talking about, was a disaster for our country. You know that all the effort we made, when you have Ellen Johnson Salif, in different capacities, including when they asked her to be one or two co-chairs to form a new global agenda, something was the cause of that. The respect the country had gained among the committee of nations. That's why they asked her to do those things. She depended on people like you, wise, smart, educated, can that happen now? In the last six years, could that happen? When President Selly was president, was there any record of anybody being sanctioned as you have multiplicity of sanctions during your last regime? Don't you see the disparities? So, we own path. 
And maybe I could even say Ado says you're not a single person being sanctioned. But even as it says here goes on, I believe people from the past will still be sanctioned. That those lists will grow. That would just be an indication of the transgression you guys carry on on our country. And rather than even giving people the space to breathe, our people who desire peace to breathe, some of you are involved. Not you, but some of your people are involved in useless agitation. And worse errors like you would I advise them to comport themselves properly and behave. If you lost an election, the country should not exist because of you. If there are efforts to where accountability should not happen because you say something, I heard someone else say when they talk about the passport, say they will not respect they will travel. Let the passport schedule you pass, and they will be the only passport in your hand. You go get in and travel. Then you will know whether you only get mouth to talk or things got impact on you that you don't know about. But it's a pleasure that we came. I'm pleased with everybody, including those who were harsh, Sam Jackson, uh, Duadu, uh, <laughs> as it do. Everybody, it's okay. Stand up, do your thing as you do it always. I enjoy it. You know, I can enjoy it. Let me go, 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 me. Even though nobody yeah. better, everybody ain't like growing anymore. You know, I'll see this town. I'll be in studio town. They are going awesome. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So, anyway, Pierre, thank you for coming, man. Have a good night, sir. Thank you. All right, can you please get Angie Mama with you? It's late in La Bro. She can go also. <laughs> Dwalu, again, welcome as a while. Let's do our closing, Mr. Jackson, Vanny JJ, and your mama. A good show today. Thanks to Jeremy McPier. Uh, I really wanted to talk to Patrick Sudo, but we couldn't because actually, uh, this the studio didn't tell us that Jeremy McPier, he was in studio at the time. We're trying to bring in Patrick Sudo as fast as we could, but um, Jerry Limick was already in the studio. So we had to just make that adjustment. It was his call because he was the guest. I want to say thanks to all of you that joined us. Thanks for sharing the show. I strongly disagree with the last comment, Mr. Duardo of Jerry Limick Pierre. I have my own opinion. I think the letter written by Sylvester Grisby to the social security, I think they should investigate. I will call on the senators to intervene a call Sylvester Grisby that he can explain to the Labyrinth people who authorized him to write such a letter. He had no power as advisor to the president elect, bypassing the committee, the JTTT committee, and, you know, to request for five vehicles. I believe, and I strongly believe, that as those things are illegal. I think if we preach change, we come from the battle of change, we should exercise and implement change. To earn this human, if Sylvester Graceman made a mistake, no fear, no favor, he should answer. He should be summoned by the senators and answer question in this regard. It was wrong yesterday, it's wrong today, and we shouldn't accept it because we want a better tomorrow. So it will always be wrong. Sylvester Graceman requested, wrote a letter on the 17th, five days to inauguration. Regardless of the situation, GSA had already had 70 vehicles, 70, 70. It could have gone and run more vehicles. They should have made it known to everyone. But it was a clandestine letter written by Sylvester Grisby. It was a clandestine letter. I know Sylvester Grisby, I respect him. But it was very bad, and there will be no one that will come up to defend it because then you are not doing liberal people any justice. That's why Gerald M. Pierre had to bulk out the answer and answer the way he answered because he knew if you're on the other side, he was going to be screaming on top of Mount Everest. He knew it was wrong. That's why Senator Amar Kone, I must celebrate him that he is speaking on this issue and raising concern. Darius DeLong said he would speak on it Edward Snow, they all received the information because this is total embarrassment and nobody should cover it up as much as the government were jammed that they needed a car. So Vester Grisby as advisor to the president elect had no reason to secretly write a letter to social security. That letter was a secret letter. Which other entity did Sylvester Grisby write a letter to? But as Glennie said, 
we have to show every other place of Vesta Grace we took money from prior to the election. People are willingly giving documents. And then the investigation will continue. That would be the best thing to do. I don't hear Sylvester Grisby. The president, Jose Yiman Buarca, had confidence in him. The 4,500 coupon. Sylvester Grisby need to answer for it likewise. It can be anybody in the mansion. It can even be Joe Lemay Pierre. Jacob Akori is a friend and brother to me, but we have to address this issue from the car. I talked to Jake. I know there was no money spent, but we have to address it with fear and favor. So to each his own, I would say as I see it, I think in this case, people that want to defend the government, defend with love, defend with truth, defend with all fear or favor, and allow Liberian people to speak on the issue. So Vester Grisby was wrong. So Vester Grisby was wrong on the 4,500. So Vester Grisby was wrong on getting 117,000. And people that own the car, one of which, that Sylvester Grisby, personal, personal individual that owned one of the car. She's driving it right now. How can you justify that? How? Imagine Nathaniel Fallon McGay obtaining a car and giving it to one of his baby mom. Everything we said about President Weir, this is not right. This is not fair. Social security need to pay the old people. They need to take care of that which is right. People that have retired. Why they didn't bring it up? Why we have to break the news? So tomorrow we'll break another news here on Spoon. And everybody that defends Sylvester Grisby will have to go back and defend him again. People are angry. People are saying this because they are angry. So we've we'll given the time, a few 10 seconds I got left. I will say this, Dwalu. I don't think it was right. I think they should be upfront with the Liberian people, accept the mistake, and move the country in the right direction. Charlie Mapier said a lot of good things that is happening. We can applaud the government for it. But this issue of a Sylvester Grisby overplaying his hand. He shouldn't be another cartel. He shouldn't be another embarrassment to President Joseph Yimabwaka. He shouldn't be another instrument to destroy the legacy of this great champion we all fighting for. Mm -hmm. It is wrong. It will always be wrong. And I rest on this one. That's my closing. Say your own, I say my own. And I think we didn't discuss the Chris Smith letter. We'll do it tomorrow. And uh, we'll move in the right direction. Thank you, guys. Glenny, Dwalu, Uncle Sam, Ava, Chimama. Let's start with uh, our sister, Glenny, and go to Dwalu. Sis, JJ. Good show tonight. It was great being here with everybody. That's my closing. Well, and to the audience, always, man. You got your friend, so you don't say nothing. So. Whatever. Well, thank you. I think I think the minister was brilliant. A lot of things were explained. He was. And one thing I want to say to, to the audience, you have to understand, we sit on this platform not claiming perfection on any circumstance. We have to address issues, even if it makes you squint a little bit, it makes you say, you know what, wrong? Hey, man, you don't do that way. You're like you. Everything that concerns Liberia concerns me. But one thing I love today is the hint that we are going to make some effort to take care of our soldiers. This is, this is near and dear to my heart. We have to look to them. People that serve us, we must serve them. The soldiers need us. Now, the civil servants, the police officers, firemen, we have to look to them. This is what the government does. A responsible government looks <laughs> to the people that take care of them. By the end of the day, it has to be about Liberia. You will not like some of the things that I say here, but nothing that is said here, by me especially, is ever going to be malicious. The intention is always going to be, let's get it right. Let's get it right. It's a half, it has to be about protecting the people of the Republic, the people of Liberia. It's not about somebody who comes to government and serves the government. That person cannot be living a lost lifestyle while the rest of the country suffers. For me, that makes me wrong. I'm not going to be silent on that very issue. If you got rich in government, this is not the right way to get rich. Government is not meant for you to get rich. It's meant for you to serve, to, to, to live a comfortable life. If you make some money out of government, you're legal money. But if you're building mansions in government, this will be reclaimed. 
Now, the accusation that you cannot claim property until you go to the court as proclaimed by McGill, that is a lie. That is not true. If you, whatever you have is a proceed of a suspected crime, the government can seize that property, put it in trust until the government can determine who the property belongs to or how that property was acquired. Everything is legal. Let's do Liberia right for once. That's all I have to say tonight. Once again, the attention to the audience. Thank you, Duardo. Mr. Jackson. Well, thank you very much. It was a great thing. Uh, don't mind the interaction. Jerry Lemick is my very close friend. We are very, very good, and we, we have a frequent interaction. Look, let's just be very frank here. Um, anybody who doesn't want to see asset recovery is not a patriot. Anybody who does not want to see Joe Baca succeed is not a patriot. But we, this is a government that... Uh, uh, trying to brand itself as, as something new, reforming. You cannot go in the street without doing basic research. Basic research. An asset register from the GSA should have indicated the list of vehicles that was bought over the six years and the status of those. The first thing that they should have done to go to the asset registry and make a determination where these vehicles are in whose possession, do an inventory of those vehicles, and put out a call, a call, that Patrick Sudo, you are driving this vehicle with this VIN number, this year, this model, please bring it so we can make a determination as to the legality of ownership. But to send some thugs, Okay, but now I will say some thugs. People who acted like thugs, thuggish behavior, grown up behavior, to go on the streets, the principal street of the country, and stop people. Then you go take uh, cars, yellow cars. You say they are not, that is not the function of the asset recovery team to go, that's the Minister of Transport, to determine whether cars are legally registered. What well, a cars are legally registered. Then again, he's trying to back Sylvester Grisby to say Sylvester Grisby because of the time they didn't want to make the people shame. But I rented cars. Then he said that the old guys, maybe Sylvester Grisby and myself, we have something to go back. Sylvester Grisby, I left that bro in 1971. Okay, I didn't have no interaction either. Uh, what they call it, Tini, officially or as a kid with Sylvester Grisby, we never had no interaction. I, I probably talked to him no more than about 10 times in my life. But what is right must be put to right. What he did borders some criminality, and there should be an investigation. He has several options, several options. Could have rented cars. He could have asked Liberian uh, people who supported Joe Borka. In the in Liberia, who got nice cars? We're closing at a monologue so, now. What is we not a monologue? And they're telling you. So, you see, anytime I start oh, talking and start talking, with the phone. We're we're the the okay, let me stop. The daddy, daddy, that that the strategy of the unity party to deflect and divert so we can talk, you know. But you don't believe in freedom of speech, that's okay. I will shut up. I shut up. Abba, go ahead and we may answer Mama last. Go ahead, Abba. Yeah, um, wonderful show. A lot of comments from our, you know, viewers and participants. And hopefully the optimism of um, our man, Joe Limit, is what actually transpires. Because he's, he's spinning positively right now. And we just hope it's a reality. But to defend some of these actions, you know, especially for Sylvester Grisby, he can't tell us to ignore the process or system of governance and just because Labrador is going to be in Paris. What's the proof that Labrador is going to be in Paris? They who have borrowed cars or rented cars for so many different people of equal quality like what was bought. The fact that they went to the National Social Security to get that funding just does not sit right. 
The National Social Security Fund is the people's money. The people pay into that fund. There is no justification for willy-nilly withdrawal from those accounts or supporting situations. Investment, yes, where the people can get returns on the money. But that explanation doesn't hold water. And, you know, I really hope something can be done about those kind of things and make clear that people should not be making those kind of requests. I know some, it's, it's probably common practice in business as usual, but this is supposed to be changed. This is a rescue operation. It has to be different. And hopefully it will continue on the other side, reflecting a different kind of behavior or different kind of um, you know, governance process that will hold people accountable for their actions, that will be able to take action against people who stray from the correct path you know, of governance. Um, the whole thing about no cap, hopefully we can get clarity there because some people say the check was presented to the bank. Some people say it was never presented. Other people say the money was actually withdrawn. So when Jake comes, hopefully he can really clarify. Hopefully there can be some availability of documentation to you know justify the action or to prove whatever. But um, there are a lot of things happening. It's wonderful that our platform that is, is trying to keep tabs on this, this stuff. But hopefully it will not be like the 24 hour news cycle that when something comes around and we just talk about it, we then forget about it and we don't see it to its um, you know, point of completion or the, the fruition of whatever effort or whatever you know, issue that we are focusing on. So again, um, Stanton, thank you for the platform. And you know, we appreciate our participation and especially the comments that we get from our people here. So thank you. Abba, thank you very much, man. It's always good having you. Let's give the rest of the show to Andrew Mama. Thank God, as they do, it's not here. Let's listen to what Andrew Mama have to say. We'll be quiet. We'll mute ourselves. Even if you want us to leave, we can leave, but we'll stay here with you. Close, Andrew Mama. God, I'm not going to leave. I will stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I like to <laughs> I like to say uh, thanks to Stanton and the rest of the team for the show. It was a very good show. And I also like to appreciate Jerolimic Pia, the Minister of Information for coming. For me, I knew that I had no doubt that he would have represented the rescue team so perfectly. And as I, I want to say that uh, pertaining to Sylvester Grisby, just what I said, he said the same thing. Look, when you inherit a government that the past government stole everything no not face the fact they stole everything they stole the cars they stole the, the computer they stole the 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 rock on the floor they stole everything i'm not saying i will repeat myself again i'm not saying that the procedure was correct the procedure was not correct but only the circumstances circumstances that they found themselves they had to do something it was a critical moment and we were not prepared to take that shame they wanted us to have our guests walking from 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 RIA to Monrovia and were not possible I don't care how they put it that's my opinion so we made that decision the procedure they didn't go through the virtual system yes but the minister said tonight one thing he said I cut my heart he said, what make you think? He said, that money on that ministry, that money going to be a uh, place. They're going to put the money back into the social security account because it's the same government. He said it here tonight. So it's something easy. It's not criminal. The man can commit crime to say that he took the money and he went, he spent it on your girlfriend, he spent it on your wife if he's married. No, he didn't do that. So that later I want to rest. No car. I want the government to actually investigate why you will have a contract of 2.5 million for a billing. I saw the billing today. I went there today to see the billing. Four story billing. It does not worth 4.5 million. No. 
From 1.5 million, you gave it up to 4.5. This is totally wrong. Now, there is the issue we will be talking about. Let's investigate NOCA to find out why they amended that thing so quickly after uh, after the government won. They amended it and, and, and it came to 4.5. We need to investigate that contract. Number two, Jay Kabakoli, as I learned, he didn't pay the money. The minister said he didn't pay. They have not paid BMC. Instead of them paying BMC their amount of money, I think the money that they owe the employees in no car, the 132, 132,000, I'll let you be precise, 132,000 should be paid, yeah. Should be paid to the employees. Okay, I think that is very important. They should pay that first. Then the balance money can use it for operation because no car is not bringing in money, so it would take time for the, the government to you know turn things around for them. But you cannot leave the employees undone, not paying the hundred and thirty-two million. I mean, Tassi, and then you pay yourself hundred fifty thousand, sixty-six thousand, thousand to 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 the board chairman. I'm I'm, I'm warning. What kind of board chairman is that? Well, you will not take the employees um, priority number one, but you put them to the last, you didn't pay them, but you pay yourself. I think it was wrong, totally wrong. And that should be investigated because I've never seen that before where government is in interchanging. Then you pay yourself and you leave the employees alone. Then, um, okay. I like to say to Lady anytime, anytime keep up. Why you not stop it? Energy, mama. Now she only talk about 10 seconds. You don't have to go You don't stop to be seen. No, you don't like Jawa. People, one last one to say. I want to say, yeah, in the public, man, that Patrick Suru came into the studio, but because he's a humble man. He's a man who respect people. By the time I've known Patrick, he had always be a humble person. He came in the studio, he said, Energy Man, I'm leaving. No need of me sitting here. I will leave. Don't go ahead with the show. Nobody forced him to leave, but just the fact that he did that shows respect and that way I should have checked the car for him. Him. I should not check the car for him. I want to say thank you to him for that. Yes, and lastly, 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 Uncle Sam Whitman, lastly, <laughs> I like to say to, to, to the information minister, you're doing a great job. Continue the work that you are doing. Continue and don't let anybody discourage you. That man is smart. You ain't hear what he said. You got to answer for all the things you will, you, will, you, will, you will bring. You will bring anything, you'll be able to answer it precisely. You don't have nothing for you. In fact, I don't even have a question for you tonight. The man, you know, they have a question for him. The, 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 man, <laughs> the man was up to the tax. So I want to say thank you to him. And I want to say to Uncle Sam, you, we have to work together. Let's work together. Don't mind I said do. I said do. It's just that a small thing. You know, he's confused, that my son. I said it's a little bit confused. Because since we won, it's very difficult. I got to find something for the baby, Jimama, man. Yeah, we'll find something for him. We'll find something for him. We'll find something for him, man. Even though Stanley can give you more time than us, he can always put me in the back. If you did, he'll put me in the back. Why you put me in the back for the guy clapping for the guy? Yeah. You got to answer the question. He put me in the back. They're my nephew. But I know he still loves me, so I'm not best. I'm not mad. But Andrew, Mama, Andrew, Mama, who will not love you? Maggie want you to call him. Andrew, Mama, Andrew, Mama, Maggie want you to call him. Your brother, Maggie want you to call him. Of course, I love my niece, Benny. Dr. Richardson, all of them. Dr. Richardson. Dr. Richardson. Dr. Richardson. Dr. Richardson had to work. Dr. Richardson had to work today. She, she's all yeah, with Fatima. Fatima have to work today, so I they are so off. Good. But we had we had a great show. Thank God we had only two of you instead of four, which of <laughs> course it was better. Want to say thanks? Come on and show Nelson. 
to Gerald Limick, Pierre. We want to say thanks to Patrick yep, Sudo for coming yep, no, we never had the time. We never had the time to talk to Patrick Sudo. But again, this issue of asset recovery, I believe, what I have come to understand, Glenny, once Patrick Sudo took all his document, they either gave him his car. Yes. Because we got we got to show the picture of the car, right, Lenny? No, but this is the car. the car. Once they the no, hold, hold, on, hold on, Angie, Mama. So this this is the car. The car was an old car, 2016. Look at this. Okay, that when the car got finished, right? You see this car? They rebrand the entire car. They changed everything. You see? You see the work they did on the car? It was a 2016 car. It was a very bad car. They had to do everything on the car. All right, so what you're seeing here, the car went through a complete overhaul, mechanical, body work, everything. That's what makes the car what it is. Patrick Sue said he had some people here looking for parts, and they took the part, regardless of the story, regardless of the story. Look at this car, Glenn. Regardless of the story, it is only fair to say the asset recovery people doing the job. <coughs> now, Patrick Sudo, we have to carry the document and say, I bought the car. Yes, the receipt. Yes, my document. Let me have my car. With these pictures, if the people come by and say, no, my man, they carry worth 150000 or maybe the car worth the 117000 Sylvester Grispe took from Social Security, then they can make the decision whether they give Patrick Sudo money back and take the car or whether to allow Patrick Sudo to keep the car. But I would like to show this because it is important. As you can see, that's the car. That's the car. Complete body work because the car was messed up. The car is say the car say having problem. The car say having problem. The car was used by Gregory Coleman. Gregory Coleman passed the car over to Patrick Sudo. It lasted up to 2020, 2021 early. The car broke down. So we hope the asset recovery people will uh, share information. I think well, how much he paid between 2005 and 5000 for the car. It is true. I confirm it. That's what Patrick Sudo paid because the car couldn't start like they said. So as Glenn can say, so far BA. And now what you can say, what you say, so far is BA. I don't know where you get that other one from. Whatever the case would be. I think. Well, you said so far is it to stay. So far is it to stay. Yeah. Yes, man. Tonight, when he checked the document and everything is correct, they will get Patrick a car. And any yeah, other yeah, person, I, Patrick. I uh, agree. I agree. On my PC, that took other poor car, put them down in the street, and now I gave them back the car. Took the receipt. Took the yeah, money. But again, uh, again, what would tell our like mama? Auntie mama, what would tell our fellow government? Auntie mama, what would tell our fellow government and the fellow Liberians? We will not walk the walk that CDC walk. That's what I'm saying. Okay? I say the this issue that they will give the car that. back is a good thing. The issue that uh, when Patrick, they didn't, look, look at it. the lady, Mary Bro, she got information. She signed the paper. So Patrick Sulu will probably get his car back and then the guys will move on. Yeah, when they take the car, any yeah. other person who has documented will get in the car back, I guess. But, but, but I think the asset recovery thing is a good thing. How are they going to be implemented, Glenny? That's what people are talking about. But I think we'll get in there. Castillo Martin is doing everything he can legally to be the Lord abiding counselor, chairperson on the asset recovery. I think he's trying. It will not be easy because you know what? It has never happened before, Glenny. Joe, we are telling you it didn't happen. But I said it didn't happen. So it would be hard. It would be a, a rough and, and way. Anything. You know, and people make a mistake, happen. but they will, they will adjust at last. They, they, they yeah, don't find the balance. You know, so again, let's just put our mind to it. I think we, we do a good step. Let's just give them the chance. It shall be well. Thank you, Glenny. Have a good night. Go eat your castor grain. Stop allowing the old man to cook for you, Glenny. She's not well. You can cook for yourself. Don't do this. I know the man is yeah. always in the book of her life. Yeah, don't do that. Oh my, you can't. I'm an only child. I'm an only child. But Glenny, she's. If you know what, he's a big only child. Glenny, 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 the Oma is poor, okay? You tell you the Oma cooking for me. Yeah. That's why you're not dead and not buying me food. Okay, you don't understand. That's why you're on a date, stop buying me food. The only date you got in Liberia, I don't know when you will come back. How you know you're in Liberia? Nancy, you're my good night.
Because he ain't like yeah, he, he related to Nathaniel Miguel, so that how I know. <laughs> she ran away. That's it. Thank you very much. Aju Mama, have a good night, okay? I want to say thank you. Aju Mama, let me say something though. It looks like Jetty is the man when it comes to small businesses and elevating people businesses in Liberia. And I'm going to bring in Jetty. What do you say? Hold on, hold on, Andrew Mama. Hold on, Andrew Mama. Nelson. I want to hear that The whole thing I miss Katana. I want to hear that Andrew Mama, sorry, I got to go back. Go ahead, go. No, no, go ahead. No, no, Andrew Mama, bye. Go, we we'll have that conversation in the ball. I'm, I'm saying I'm going to bring a representative from Jetty. Okay? Then you have to bring Then you have to bring Andrew Mama, hold on now. Andrew Mama, hold on. Everything. Jetty is doing in Liberia from start Very to easy. finish. Hmm? Everything. Hey, Angie Mama, give me a chance now. Angie Mama, have a good night. Nelson, let me talk to you. Let me <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to I'm not going to yeah, Don't interrupt me. You must say yes to talk. So, promise not to interrupt me. All right. Do okay. something this way. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so let me say this. It's important. Jetty is engaged in a lot of different stuff in Liberia. Forget that he's an Indian man. No, Nelson, come back. I want you to be part of it. Forget that he's an Indian man. But he's doing something. I went through everything that this businessman is doing in Liberia. And I think it's about time for us to talk about it, for us to show it to Liberia, for us to show it to Liberians home and abroad, for everyone. You know what, when people do this thing, they hide it. Andrew Mama, you will be on spoon. I will talk about everything Jetty is doing in Liberia and let the Liberian people see for themselves whether he's doing good or whether he's doing bad. Every engagement and every businesses, over 500 to 1,000 people that are working for this businessman. I want us to talk about it. Over 500 Liberians, between 500 to 1,000, when you talk about Boncante, when you talk about Kakata, when you talk about Mozzarella, when you talk about these different areas, I think it's about time for us to showcase whether he's doing the right thing or whether he's doing the bad thing. The same way with CTN. We're bringing CTN. The owner is Aminata. We'll bring, we'll bring up. Let's expose them, and then Labro decide. How can a businessman, I want to see how many business people, business individual in Labro, having over 500 to 1,000 employees, people getting salary. I want to know what they are doing. So that they are I, no, 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 it's not advertising. I want to bring them on for them to tell Labro what they are doing, what they are doing so, so much that they are having impact in the lives of Liberians. If they are doing the worst thing, we'll say it. And, and so folks, as you join us all the time, we want to just say to you, please be patient. We're going to bring them. We're going to go to the businesses. We're going to, we're going to bring them. It's a new thing, Aunt Mama. Even your guy that you're talking about, the person that you're talking about, we, we want to know about him. Of course, I think you want to know him. We want to know what these people are doing. They, 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 the city and those business areas. We want to bring them a spoon. If these guys and they are bad people, we're going to say. It. If they are good, we're going to say. It. But they need to come a spoon for Liberians to know them. And, and, and it's a blessing that they hire Liberians. And we'll compare them with the other concession company around the country. We'll compare them and see, let Liberia know them. That's all I'm saying. People cry on city and at the foot. They cry, they cry, they cry. The owner, Aminata, she got to kind of tell Liberia the work of city and. Is Jose Yuma Baraka government continuing with city and? We got to let the people know. Is Jose Yuma Baraka government going to continue with Jetty? All the businesses, rubber business, steel business, everything all over. We help the nation. 
We have to oh, talk on so these things. Uh, when I finish, I leave you, Andrew Mama. I'm really hungry. My head hurts me. Why are you leaving me? You say something. I gotta say something. Uh, Andrew Mama, you gotta go home, man. You can't come oh, first and leave me. Andrew Mama, uh, Andrew, what, do you, what do you do in a day? What do you do in a day? I work in a day. I got meetings. I got different different. Yeah, Andrew Mama, please go get ready for your work tomorrow. It's late. It's after twelve. <laughs> I'm not Andrew Mama, thank you, please. Oh, you Andrew Mama. Dirty against uh, the uh, uh, people. Uh, Auntie Mama, listen. Auntie Mama, listen. Please, we're begging you. I said, no, yeah, Auntie yeah, Mama, wait now. Auntie Mama, stop. Yes, Mama, what do you call it? Auntie Mama, what do you call it? The mother of the mother of Samara, what do you call it? Winner. That only thing I can be on fire. So, what you need to do? No, no, no. No, 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 no. Auntie Mama, you get the wrong. I am saying to you, I'm saying, well, listen, Mama, listen. I'm, listen. I'm, mama, listen. I'm saying to you what you need to do. I'm saying what you need to do. I'm saying what you Mama, you will talk one at a time. Listen, get all of your feeling, Mama. I beg you, please, 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 listen. Yeah, yeah, Auntie Mama, listen. Uh, listen. Auntie Mama, listen. Hey, God. Hey, God. Auntie Mama, we're not listening to you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. All right, but wait now, wait, wait, wait. Auntie Mama, wait, wait, yeah, you. Auntie Mama, wait, 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 wait. Auntie Mama, hey, God, hey, God, hey, God. That's why you let the old man go home. Look at you, not tell the old man. Oh, bring the old man back on. Don't tell her, oh, bring the old man back on. Let's show my set up. Bring the old man back on. <laughs> but yeah, but the only thing she got away. Auntie Mama, wait small. I beg you, yeah, man. I beg you. You might enter. Auntie Mama, wait now. Let me ask you a question. Yes, let me let me ask you a question. Let's do it one at a time. What I said to you, Auntie Mama, bring the person that you want to bring on the show, right? We will ask Jetty. Okay, bring you it. see now. There you go. Hmm. No, I feel like I'm telling people. I see what Auntie Mama. But Auntie Mama, you gotta wait. Auntie Mama, you gotta wait. I see what Dusty Rhodes. I see what Dusty Rhodes called him ran away from the old man. Because if the man came from work, you call the GB and he ran to eat, then you start complaining, why you came home late? Why you now come home late? Da, 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 da. It made him to run away, Andrew Baba. The man, that's what the call he told me, it made him to run away. So you I got to tell the story. <laughs> that's it. That's what I'm calling. That's what I'm calling. Say you look at it for long, you check up. But I give my own. Let me ask you a question. I'm not saying anything bad. <laughs> I am saying to you, bring your own man, right? I will bring. Yeah. Let the brown people hear the story about the rubber issue in the country. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I already yeah. talked to TD. Yeah, but we gotta we gotta expose these things. Okay. The CTN, we gotta force Aminata to come on the show and tell Liberian how CTN helping Liberians. Like how we, all we the Liberians, all the Liberians, we gotta go what ahead and tell. We gotta go ahead and tell Jetty, Jetty, say your representative, tell Liberian people how you helping them. We gotta come to your guy, the man yeah. that you talking about. Come on the show and tell Liberia how you intend to help Liberia. Listen, this is poor talking for everybody. Yeah, but it may help you now. You know how many people he has hired right now? The first thing now because well, Jetty. Well, I don't. I don't, want to have, I don't want you to have the conversation. I want you to bring them. I'm bringing him. Yes. I Let's already made that. arrangement with with the CEO on grind. I already made arrangement with with TD, and we already made arrangement when it will come. So yeah, I will bring them. Please say, please say, 
Can you please extend my greetings to Mr. Dustin Wodokori? Thank you. I said thank you. I tell him thank you from my heart. Okay. <laughs> Every night, he listens to me right now. Tell Papa, say, run, run. When the Papa saw Andrew, Mama, he said, no, I got to check him. But I didn't mistake the Papa, man. He went to another person who was by the name Jane. And <laughs> your Mama just uh, tell the Papa, listen, what's your name start with Jane? He like you. <laughs> Let's send a shout out to Mr. Dustin Wodokori. I want to say greetings to you. All you right. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew Mama. I have a good one. Say that on your kiss. Say that on your kiss. What did I say about? Oh, your daughter? Hey, daughter. Oh, yeah. She know we're joking. Say, oh, how's your grandson? Oh, the boys. We trying to walk. The How son. old is he? Eight months. Yeah, my grandson, my grandson walking now. Eight you months, know? yeah. My grandson can point to his eye, his nose, and, you know, the kids How don't House, uh, Libra, Libra turning 15 months this this one. Oh, okay, yeah. but he can't get months. Yeah, but he 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 put it on everything. Yeah, he's he's a he's a he's a he's a hard beat. For me, I just gonna grab him and we just chill all night. I know. You know yeah, he's he's yeah. I miss him so much. I miss him. So yeah, what we do is that we 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 talking away from his mom and he's sleeping with us. Oh, okay. loves, yeah, he loves to sleep with us. He's, he's, wow. he's a sweet Yeah, okay. that's Levi Dempster. He's cool. So, I want to say, Andrew Mama, thank you, man. It's always good having you. Thank you for being patient and being very, very understanding. You, you spoke my name to the whole people. You said the man ran away. The man ran away. <laughs> the man, no, I, that's what I heard. They said the man was swearing the Deva. Then you came in from the kitchen. Then you were asking him, and said, Didn't you hear it? Then it went. I know tomorrow, Angie, Mama will come out with clarity and part two today. Yes, <laughs> I will clarify. <laughs> she will do research. People, you're not letting me stay on. Stay on my nephew. I just be joking. No, no, we're joking. joking. Oh. No, we're joking, Angie, Mama. We're joking. You know, that's the that's the after show joke. joke. Angie, Mama, man, Jerry, let me appear with strong though. You are strong. He's good. Jerry, listen. That man is smart. And I will say this again. The yes, arrangement, right? No, the arrangement, right? About making Jerry Lima Pierre information minister and sending Fagon to LBS. That was a brilliant decision. Yeah, that was good. Jerry Lima Pierre is so unique. Yes. You know, yes. Um, that's information minister. He must defend the government. See what you want to say. And I think that what he's doing. I respect it even more. The question about Grace Fred, he knew that actually something happened wasn't right, but he must tell the librarian people why it is. That's a good thing. They will take it from there. No, it's, not about, it's, it's, not it. it's not about putting the money back. It's about you shouldn't have done it. Yes, in secretly, overtly. You I shouldn't have done it. Circumstances now. Yeah, yeah. But, but we move now. If you say the man has stolen the money and eaten it, no, it's not about. It's not about he. No, no. So, so it's not about. It's not about he. He. He stole the money. No, it's about the way in which they requested the money. It's about the people that are driving the vehicles. I don't want to go there because you know why. I can say it, and I ask Mr. President that this thing shouldn't happen again. Right? We are not asking that Grace leave. That the president fire Grace we're making this corruption that we can have a better government for the next five years. Our desperate well, moment. You know, like the government was not in place there, but you see how the government moving smooth and the ship gets sailing. No, Andrew <laughs> Mama, Andrew, Andrew Mama, Andrew Mama, it will be fair for you to be fair to see the government yeah. moving to see the government moving smoothly. We're not there yet. You saw what happened. You saw what happened in Baltimore, right? You saw. You saw what happened in Baltimore, right? The ship. The ship went. You saw what happened in Baltimore. The ship hit the bridge, and six people died. Yeah. 
And at the end of the day, the 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 ship, there was no electricity, the money captain is done, and the ship went and hit the bridge. So we have to be careful on every aspect. The president is trying, but we have to be careful. Look at the war in economic crime court. Look what Chris Smith is saying. We never even got to that composition. It's huge. Would there ever be a war in economic crime court? When Christmas speak in Congress, people listen. They are mad. They are getting mad. They're holding the government responsible that there must be no action. But I can say this though. I think Jose Yuman Parker will implement. And he, as he promised, he would deliver on the war in economic crime code. But the issue to rush it, I think it's not right. And I will stand with the president on this one. Though he make the proclamation, but pause a little bit. Don't push it. Don't rush it. Because you know what? It will have a dying consequence on the Labyrinth people. A lasting effect on the Labyrinth people. So I do believe that the president hold back a little bit and wait and observe and make that decision that is necessary will help the country. Right now, you talk about why economic crime code, everybody happy. But that decision is a big decision. And I know the Americans are getting angry. Uh, Chris May wrote a press release with discussing them all. But boy, oh boy, we are not there yet. We are not there yet. We will get there. It shall be well. We will get there. We still believe in Joseph Buaka. We still trust him. Some way, somehow, one way or other, we still do. When we see mistake, we criticize. But we still think that there's a hope. And Jerry Lima Pierre did extremely well, I must say. He did extremely well. Yeah. And, you know, I hope they can they can put him out there a lot. It, it will help always him. Trust him. He has always been like that. He, he, he has not changed. I've always trusted him. He, he's to the point. And you fear no question or to answer. That's why I like it for him. Yeah. You fear no question to answer. Have a good night, Andrew Mama. Oh, you want me going now? But I thought you said you were safe, you are going. Yeah, man. Uh, the the code is getting hotter. The code, Have yeah. a good night. Uh, yeah. Okay. I got to. I got to. Um, I got to go. Andrew Mama, go going now. Let me talk to Nelson. <laughs> Don't let say that you want to go. You got me on the radio. <laughs> Andrew Mama, go now. Let me talk to Nelson. Okay. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I remember, but you didn't promote your uh, Airbnb, yo. Yeah, I told. What is the video? I told Nelson that he should come and do the video, so I don't know. Yeah, Nelson, you gotta go uh, do the video. Let's show it because people are asking, people trying to get the information who to call. And you know, you know, people are still traveling. Uh, two, yeah. Two, yeah. Oh, two, no. they, they, uh, people call me. Two individual call me, and. Um, you know, and they have, and seriously, seriously, uh, I think one of them, the mother is going to Liberia and she want to put them in your Airbnb and see whether it's reasonable. And they would so, like it because it's right there, Beyond Royal Hotel. It's a beautiful place. The Beyond Royal? Right behind Royal, and Royal is charging, I think, $250 for a single room, and I'm just charging $100. So you got food? It's a one, one bedroom apartment. I got about eight ready. So people, but they're going to cook their own food though. Royal will give you breakfast. You don't give people breakfast, right? Royal gave you breakfast. Yeah. But they're charging two hundred fifty bucks. I'm, I'm, I'm giving uh, uh, hundred dollars. When I come to Liberia, you let me pay if I can. Eh? I'll give you one free. Free? Cross my heart. What? Why my nephew? Yeah. Now? What is money? Yeah, that's it. She'll what is money? You get when you, when you I'm a witness. Shit. Where is money you can share with your family or friends? I will give you one free. But Andrew, Mama, let me go do the video. We want to show to the people. Nelson, I okay, beg you. you. Go, yeah. go, there, go there tomorrow. Do a complete video. People are asking. Let's show to them. They, 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 actually, people traveling every time they want to go somewhere quiet. Is it quiet? Yeah. Very Is nice. it in a fence? Is it in a fence? In a fence. And you got security? 24 hour security, very in a very nice neighborhood. It's on Russell Avenue and 15th Street, right in the back of the road. 
So it's not by the seaside, right? It's by the land side. No, right? I know. I live on the seaside, but it's right across the street. Yeah. Okay. Right behind the Can't miss it. Upstairs building? No. Huh? Is that two, three levels or just single? Four story. Four story, okay. Four story, but I'm finished with three floors now. Okay. I'm on the last one. I'm doing the last one. Yeah, but I'm finished with ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. Wow, oh, okay. You got CC, somebody asked you, you got a CCTV? Everything. I got, I got six cameras. I got six cameras around the building. Yeah, I have a very big one on the building up that can take everything. It's it's wow. up to the almost like American thing, yeah. It's, the it's, kitchen, everything is good. Stove, everything. Yes, you remember I seen this stuff? What about washer and dryer? No, people are asking. I got washer and dryer. I got washer and dryer. I got LEC. In each apartment, in each unit? No, 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 no. No. The washer and dryer, we got a place, very beautiful place right down so you can just come down and wash your clothes. And then oh. you have to go upstairs. Light everything, see through glass. It's very beautiful. Yeah. You, you, got gener you got generator or you got LEC or both? I have LEC. I'm trying to get a generator maybe by tomorrow or so. I'm trying to get a bigger one. I got one, but it's, it's, it's not big. I don't know that one coming and go. So I'm They're asking, they say, what's the phone number right now? Can you give the phone number that nursing put it up? Nelson, can you pull it up very quick? Because people are asking for the number. Yes, yeah, it's 0886. Is that the number? Who can they contact here in America? Six. Eh? Who can they contact here in America? Yeah. Why you not put the silver name I don't, now? I don't know, but they, they don't use that number because that number is on WhatsApp, and um, okay. you can get me anywhere around the world. So that, okay. that's that's my main number. Yeah. Okay. I'm not giving it for people to call me mainly because they've been calling me. Angel, my mom, you got to pay my hospital bill. Angel, my mom, I need this. Angel. Then number is given for those who are on the Airbnb. Let me make it clear. I beg you. I know you love your interval. <laughs> so, so <laughs> this guy is crazy. One sedition want me to ask, and I'm not even going to ask that question because he's a sedition. So, he said, I'm going to ask you whether you're renting any one of the places to Sylvester Grisby. You see, that's why you are joking. I don't know. You believe your own. <laughs> Tell my old seditions, my children in CDC, that it's Sylvester Grisby wants a place there for your family. I will rent it. That's true. Let me straight up. And you if will. they want place, I will rent it. Right now, I got seditions there. <laughs> Who got a place there? In fact, they have a So, I remember they, they got stove everything that people cook for themselves, everything, right? They cook their own food. They got stove everything. It's all furnished, right? It's fully furnished, but stove, I don't have them. You got Airbnb. Why? So Airbnb, how are the people? How Airbnb, do people cook? I don't know, can't cook there. Most of the time, Airbnb, you don't cook like that. But well, I remember, you can have the portables, but people want to come to bring the family. I got microwave, I got, microwave, I got, microwave, I got uh, percolator, I got every other thing there besides stove. But you get a portable stove that they can put on the cabinet, kitchen cabinet, and just cook the food. Like those small portable stove. Oh, it's yeah. the money I can get it. It's like you you don't remember when we were in La while in La Bureau, while in La Bureau at um a Royal Hotel. Uh that's I what I did. Just no, I was in La Bureau at Royal Hotel. That's what I did. I bought my portable stove and I cooked my dry rice. You know, okay, I took my dry rice. If they want it, I can buy it. No problem. I don't have a problem with that. Tell them that the CEO of that company is well equipped. Okay. Okay. I can get it for them. Okay. So, okay. so that's a good thing. We hope you can you can bring the video. Let's show the people. And I read one. Yeah. You know, people to check it out. Is 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 unique. It's good. You know, uh, people are saying you right now to get stuff before they burn your building down. Maybe. <laughs> Because as somebody, if I ask me how to do that, somebody who been in Airbnb for long, they say sometimes if we can leave a part when they, I you know, too happy, they can forget a part in the store. And some, you know, yeah. Somebody said, somebody said, let me let them talk to you. 
let me let them talk to you. They're calling me. They'll come into Liberia with their kids. Okay. Uh, so maybe you can answer her question. Yes, ma'am, you are live. Aunt your mama listen to you. Your name and where you calling from? Can, can you lower your lower your, your 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 radio now and talk into the phone, please? Hello? Hello? I mean, the person listening to the radio, but they were asking this, I will be coming with my kids and I would like to stay there. Uh, and they had a question, but uh, maybe they can go ahead and call if back. They wanted to, if they want a two bedroom, I got a two bedroom there. Very big, nice slip fix. He needs to come and do this video. So can yeah, see. the video will better explain, <laughs> better display the everything. Really is because the two bedroom is, the two bedroom is $200 per night. That's good. That's yeah. very good. Yeah, that's very good. Two bedroom, two hundred dollars. Again, when you're booking for Andrew Mama, and you want that discount, just say Spoon, and you know that you got a message from Spoon Talk, and then she will give you that extra discount when you just put the code or Spoon. Every one of you that want to call, that's Andrew Mama number, please call her directly. I have nothing to do with it. We're just promoting her. Okay, it's zero eight eight. Six eight eight one nine four six. All right. If you if it is book, it is book. So you want to call her now and make all your necessary appointment. Now, if you want to go anywhere in the country as well, you want car rental, you want whatsoever, also speak to Andrew Mama. She will give you people that will help you with vehicles. Yes. While you are in Liberia, help you with drivers because you got to understand you got to have some trustworthy people driving you around. Sometimes our own family, then they get all our way. You gotta have a dependable car, and Andrew Mama will be the one to work all of those things with you. If you want a car, you want a car to take you to Patawi Waterfall, you want a car to take you to the interior, she will give you a car that will be very, very durable. Understand, it's hard in the country, okay? She will give you a driver that will have the information, she will give you a car that can serve you while you're in Liberia. She will show you the different restaurant, the different shopping area. So all in one, call Andrew Mama. She will serve you the best way she can to make your stay in Liberia better and pleasant. All right? We're going to show you the video again. If you want cars, she will make sure that you get the best car. If you want, you know, to move around, she will make sure she gave you the best driver. And again, I will say to you, my fellow librarian, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Andrew Mama. Good thank night, guys. You, Andrew, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, yes, Hello? Okay, folks, um, again, we want to say thank you tonight. Thanks to all of you for being here with us tonight on the program. You, um, so, folks, we want to say thanks to all of you out there for being here with us tonight on this edition of the program Spoon Talk. We appreciate you for your calls. Uh, thanks for making your contribution in the comment section. We appreciate you. My name is Nelson Collet, and uh, thanks to all of our partner radio stations that have been relaying the program. Thanks to Punch, um, Gibby FM, Trust FM in uh, uh, Bombing County. Thanks to Train Radio uh, and the host of other radio stations across Liberia. Thanks to all of you across uh, the internet. We've been live on YouTube. Spoon Talk Live is the YouTube handle. Uh, on Facebook, we've been there on Spoon TV, Fabric TV, and Super TV. And uh, we uh, would like to draw down the curtains on this edition of Spoon Talk uh, to be back tomorrow. But just before we go, I want to send a special birthday greeting to a friend, uh, Hannah Towad. You're celebrating your birthday today. Happy birthday to you uh, as you celebrate a later day today. Best wishes. Uh, on this special day of yours. And um, so that's how we draw down the curtains on the show tonight. Have a good night and bye-bye uh, for now.
want to get a news update, my brother, to the spoon. You want to know what is happening, my brother, to the spoon. Politicians want to make their decision just to the spoon. You want to know what's happening in the ministry, to the spoon. Yeah. 